Okay, so welcome to our next stage, stage blue. Now, stage blue is often called tradition. Um, it can be called fitting in. It can be called absolutist or conformatist. Um, stage blue is all about um, safety, security, and certainty, okay? Um, we will probably refer to it mostly as blue or traditional, um, but as you go on, you'll see why maybe some of those other names can often sum up this uh, stage very well. Now, most people you meet in your life will be at stage blue or orange, generally speaking, if you're in the Western world, okay? And if you're in other parts of the world, that may be less so the case, um, but blue makes up a huge portion of the planet's population. Probably somewhere between 40 and 55% of the world population are at stage blue. So blue comes in probably around 5,000 years ago. So you remember how I was saying how the stages get closer and closer together. Um, and so we had um, stage purple coming in about 50,000 years ago, stage red coming in about 10,000 years ago, and here we have stage blue coming in around 5,000 years ago. And stage blue is often equated to um, agrarian culture. Uh, and so certain people, um, people like Ken Wilber, often relate uh, heavily stage blue to um, agrarian culture. Um, so we have um, people starting to farm, food being gathered, food being um, uh, created in bulk. Um, what happens in this is what it does is it frees up more and more people. Um, especially what we find is when um, people shift from using hand tools to using animals to plow the fields. Because what happens is before this, men and women equally could do the work of plowing the fields, of, of getting food ready, sowing, harvesting, all of that. Um, but with the onset of, um, of using oxen and, and other animals, um, women were less capable of doing so because it drove up miscarriages. There's a very high correlation of, of riding animals and uh, working with animals and, and miscarriages. Um, and so naturally, women did less and less and less work in the fields. Um, and men took over this role. You know, the beauty of, uh, uh, of, of this uh, kind of dynamic is that um, men were in a role that could be done by one for every few dozen people. Women still had to have their own children. You couldn't outsource having your children, um, especially at this stage in humanity where most kids didn't make it to the age of five. You had to have lots of children if you wanted a few that would survive to adulthood. Um, and so what happened is as men started to uh, uh, have their freedoms opened up uh, as they were the, the ones that farmed for food, well, now only one or two men had to farm for every few dozen men. And so what happened is other men would start to um, be free to do other things. They would be free to think, to create, to innovate. This is why at this stage we see the birth of a lot of um, uh, of what we would call today civilization. Um, men became politicians. They became interested in governance. Um, there was an explosion in populations, of course, because we could now grow much more food with much less effort. And so what happened is we could support and sustain many more people. People lived longer. There was less childhood death because there was more food, there was less hunger, uh, people were healthier. So all of this has a knock-on effect. And what it does is it sees people moving from small tribes of hundreds and thousands up into early stages of this, we saw even something like the Babylonian Empire was up to a million people. Uh, it self-reports, so who knows uh, how accurate that was. But, you know, large, large numbers of, of, of people operating as, as a group, as a one, um, as a civilization. This is the birth of civilization, really, we're talking here. Uh, stage red, we're, we're not seeing civilization, we're just seeing small tribes being ruled by tyrants. Um, but at stage blue, that shifts. There's a massive um, shift. And of course, with this power dynamic where women had to stay at home, they had to have children, they had to raise the children, men being free to think, to grow, to, to focus on their education and, and development and, and focus on running society, naturally men were the leaders. Um, so we can see that dynamic very much in play. At stage blue, um, men typically are in charge and male leadership is very important. Uh, female leadership is very threatening. It's, it's, it's um, kind of 
all been uh, developed at this kind of stage and, and grown at this stage. Well, men were in charge at stage red because they were violent and aggressive. At purple, it was often men in charge, but there was a lot more um, equality. We often over romanticize purple, um, and so there's a danger to be going, oh, I wish we could go back to that. We don't want that kind of equality. We'd much rather a, a more progressive and, and, and equality that might come in the future that, that yes, takes parts of that, but is a lot less uh, egocentric and selfish and, um, and, uh, and just a veiled equality in a sense. Um, and so let's not uh, overly glorify earlier stages. We let's take what's good from them, but let's develop and, and grow um, and advance on them. So we see this um, this whole stage kind of goes right through to probably um, industrial revolution, through to um, kind of the enlightenment. Um, so this is quite a big period of time. It's 5000 BC right through uh, up until a few hundred years ago. Okay, but again, much shorter than the time before and the time before. So we're, we're seeing a speeding up of stages um, being worked out and worked through. Um, generally speaking, stage blue, you're gonna find um, is mostly in parts of the, the, the quote unquote developing world. Um, so yes, a lot of the UK, uh, sorry, the UK, the US and Western Europe, so yeah, the UK, um, would have been blue uh, for the last however many thousands of years, but have probably largely started to shift culturally. Again, what we're talking about is generalities in the majority, over 50%, largely shifting towards orange, okay, which is the next stage, largely shifting into modernity and, and, and the modern stage. But the rest of the world, um, so places like Africa, Latin America, Asia, Eastern Europe, these places are heavily entrenched in blue and are um, some places are only just coming into blue. You think of places that are um, have recently been ravaged by warlords, dictators, things like that, and starting to have their own freedom. They're coming into blue. Other places have been blue for a long period of time um, and, and are maybe on the cusp of something new, maybe on the cusp of, of developing and growing and, and breaking out of that. Um, and again, when we talk about something being blue, something being orange, something being X, Y, or Z. We're using very loose generalities, okay? That doesn't mean that everything, everyone in that place is that, that position or that that place is 100% that. We just mean it's, it's largely that, maybe more than 50, 60, 70% might be uh, blue. Um, so important to understand uh, that when I'm, when I'm using these labels, okay? And uh, I know I've said this in every single stage so far, but I'm gonna keep saying it because it's really important we don't, um, we don't overly uh, pigeonhole things, we don't uh, presume things that aren't to be the case. Um, I, wanna, I wanna make sure we keep an awareness that we're, we're talking in, in nuances, we're talking about things that are very complex, very nuanced, and this is a, a loose model that has to be held fairly loosely. You can't pigeonhole everything into it and you can't make anything black and white within it, okay? So let's look at some key elements, some traits uh, of, of people that are at blue and cultures that are at blue, okay? So blue finds its value in having a role and identity in the group, okay? So it's really important for someone that is at stage blue to have a role, have some form of identity, know their place. Um, you'll find people that have a real drive for that often are at stage blue. Um, you, you probably need a lot more other indicators to, to really hammer that down, but that can often be very blue thinking. Um, they tend to accept authority, um, whatever that might be, you know, a pastor, God, the Bible, um, uh, a figurehead, uh, uh, a president, whatever it is, they accept that authority without question. Um, they, they just, well, that's the person that's in charge, he's supposed to be in charge, that's the way it should be. Um, Blues can often be very theocratic, um, and we'll, we'll look at that in a little bit uh, more depth as we, as we talk about this. Um, but they tend not to be democratic yet. So they're civilized, but they, um, generally speaking, have a God-appointed leader of some sort, or a, a, a destined leader, or someone that was born to be a leader, you know, someone that's got leader's blood, and we see kind of nepotism of like, you know, the, the Pharaoh's son is obviously the next Pharaoh because he was the Pharaoh's son, and the Pharaoh is the person that the gods picked, or however we think, right? Um, and so we'll see how that plays out in a lot of people's thinking um, that even in democracies, even in cultures that are largely later, democracy doesn't come in really until stage orange. Um, even democracies can have people that live in a democracy and believe in a democracy, loosely, quote unquote, believe, 
Um, but really, ultimately, they want a theocracy. Ultimately, they'd rather God's person to be in charge, not the, the most popular person, not the person that got voted based on their abilities or efforts or how the, the culture decides who's to be in charge. No, it should be God. And so that's a very blue way of thinking that, that, that the leader is the person that is supposed to be the right person because they're the right person. There's not necessarily a fully rational, um, well thought out argument behind who's in charge. It just is that way. Blues really struggle to question themselves, okay? So you're gonna have a really hard time uh, trying to uh, have a very deep, rational conversation with a blue. Um, they can think logically. So blue can be very logical. They will tend to give a very logical uh, description of what they believe and why they believe it. At least it's logical to them. However, um, it rarely does think logically and skeptically about its own beliefs. So while it can, piece together something that makes sense to them and explain it in a way that seems logical, very rarely are they able to then evaluate it logically. They, they aren't able to really dig deep and start pulling apart and looking at it from different angles. That is something that's not very easily done for someone that is at stage blue. So generally speaking, their beliefs are found um, not by reason, but by God or a leader or an authority. So I believe that because the Bible says it, or I believe that because my pastor says it, or I believe it because God said it, or I believe it because uh, the president or the king or whatever said it. That's why I believe it. Um, or maybe it's um, they follow passionately just one source of news or um, something like that. And so they believe anything that comes out of that news because that's the news, it's, it's true. But they fail to see that there's different nuances to news, different uh, uh, news groups have different beliefs. And if they do see that, well, they see one as good and the rest as evil because this is saying what's true. Not failing to see that there's this kind of feedback loop. It's only saying what's true because I believe it's true because they're saying it. Um, and so there's this awkward feedback loop. Now, because a lot of the time we establish, well, there's a God behind that. There's a, they're agreeing with God. They're agreeing with my pastor. They're agreeing with the Bible, whatever. So there's a bit more nuance and complexity to it, but it can, we, we see feedback loops a lot at stage blue where um, reason is not how they establish their beliefs, okay? So um, they, they establish their beliefs based on authority. So whether the Bible is authoritative or um, certain figures in history were authoritative, God is authoritative, uh, uh, a leader is authoritative. That's how they establish their beliefs, not on reason. They'll try and explain why it's so reasonable and why it's so logical, but it will struggle to hold up in a, in a truly uh, rational conversation with people that can see things from multiple perspectives. Um, because of this, because blue people do not establish their beliefs on ration and reason, you will very rarely be able to have an argument with someone that's at blue based on reason and ration. So it's going to feel like you're just banging your head against a wall. Um, now it's going to feel like that for the blue person as well. The blue person is gonna think these people just aren't listening, aren't understanding, they don't see uh, reason, because they see it as reasonable that the Bible says, or that God said. Uh, so they don't, they don't, they're not incapable of seeing that disconnect themselves. So for both parties, there's gonna be this just clash, because one wants you to be reasonable, the other thinks it's being reasonable and thinks the other is incapable of reason. Um, and so uh, Blue will very often heavily clash with later stages and call them all kinds of names. But later stages will also really demonize Blue because they value reason and, uh, and logic and, and rationality very highly. At certain stages, way too highly, okay? Uh, and I know if you're at a later stage, you're gonna go, whoa, whoa, what do you mean you can value reason and logic too highly? It's okay, we'll get to some of that in later stages, don't worry. But at this stage, um, Blue is really gonna struggle to operate with later stages because they're gonna see that sort of thing as evil. Now you're gonna see that as um, they will demonize science, they will demonize um, intellectual elites. It's a common phrase among someone. If you hear a phrase, intellectual elite, that is almost 100% certainly coming from a Blue, almost every time. Um, because they demonize someone that thinks they're intellectually elite. Now, 
in a real pragmatic, practical sense, yes, they probably are intellectually elite. Yes, they probably do have more tools and, and systems and they probably maybe are more educated to rationally think something out. But what they fail to see is often these people that are intellectually elite don't see themselves as elite. Maybe they do sometimes and, and that can cause real problems, but often it is just simply the case. It's, it's like demonizing uh, Usain Bolt for being a, ath a athletically elite. And it's like, well, yeah, he can run faster than me. But it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with me or that there's something right with him more than me. It's just different. Um, and maybe if I put in like hundreds and thousands of hours into running, I'd get better at running. Maybe I wouldn't get as good as running, but I'd get better. Um, so it's just, it's, it's uh, a common phrase you'll hear at Blue is something like intellectual elites. There'll be demonization of science and, and things like that. Um, so having facts at stage blue doesn't necessarily matter in discussions. Now it will matter hugely if it supports what I believe, but ultimately facts will be very quickly cast to the side. If you're having a discussion with someone at stage blue and you say something, uh, maybe you've got facts, maybe you can say, well, uh, actually we can prove that the earth is this old because of geological records. And actually we can look at this as, um, you know, uh, very, very uh, smart astrophysics and all sorts of different stuff um, have dated the Earth really fairly accurately. We might be off by a few million years, but ultimately we're probably thinking this amount of billion of years. Um, the blue person will look at all of those facts and see nothing. They will not be able to comprehend what you're saying because of one big stumbling block. The Bible says. Now, a lot of blue people don't hold to the Bible, that that's not important to them. So they might be able to look at those facts and go, okay, great. We accept that that's the, how old the earth is. But many people who are stage blue, who are still taking things very literally will go, no, the Bible says I cannot even engage with this conversation. They will fight. They will try and create other rational facts that manage to twist and shape and figure out how this works. Um, but you will not see, generally speaking, uh, people at stage blue able to accept facts that challenge their belief. They'll accept facts that support it and they'll make facts that support it. So they'll twist information to support what they believe, which is why something like um, the age of the earth is a great example. You won't find any non-Christian uh, scientists who, who have looked at stats, looked at the figures, studied for dozens of years and then gone, I know, I think the earth is 6,000 or 10,000, however many thousand years. That's how old I think it is. That doesn't happen. The only scientists that come to that conclusion are Christians. Okay. So now you could say, well, well, that doesn't necessarily disprove it. And you're right. It doesn't necessarily disprove it, but it is very interesting that no other scientists have managed to just come to this conclusion by looking at the facts. So this sort of thing is the sort of um, uh, point I'm making where someone that's blue is going to go, but, 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 but I don't care. Uh, you know, there is facts. So we, we look at these three papers we found by Christian scientists that say it's definitely 10,000 years or, you know, that they, 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 they will discredit the mass majority to find something that supports the minutia minu of what they need to believe. Um, okay, so stage blue, massive uh, fan of authority giving facts, authority giving truth. God gives me the truth, the Bible gives me the truth, the pastor gives me the truth, this leader gives me the truth, the president gives me truth, this, this uh, publication or, or newscasting or newspaper or something, that website gives me truth and they are right, whether or not the rest of the entire universe or cosmos disagrees with them. Um, okay, so very, very stage blue. Um, they will have very similar theology on the whole to the warrior. Um, they will, however, be less angry, less aggressive. And that's because at stage blue, um, there is this great need for safety, security, certainty. Um, excuse me, their civilization cannot survive when there's all this anger, aggression, and egotism. So it swung away from being ego-driven back to a we system. But the we system, this group uh, mentality has grown. So while we saw a very egotistical system at stage beige, which grew to a we, a group at tribal stage, that group was very small, very egotistical, very small. And um, that, gr that grew, but swung back to an egotistical system at stage red, very me, 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 me focused. Um, but aware of group dynamics, able to manipulate and work with groups. And so um, very, egocentric, but still able to function in a group. 
Um, but it hits the ceiling and realizes I'm not working in the group very well, this isn't gonna work long term. And it evolves into stage blue and a, again, a we mentality. But this we has now grown. Um, it's grown to be larger, more inclusive, but it's still radically exclusive, radically so. It is still just my group, my beliefs, my nation, uh, my family, whatever that looks like, but it's, it's people that look like me. So blue cannot include people that look differently because it's truths need to be the same. They, they don't work well with people that believe differently. And so blues are still very segmented, okay? Um, here's some uh, you know things blue really value. They value belief, they value faith, they value certainty, um, absolute truths. Uh, they value tradition. You know, we've always done it this way because that's a cornerstone of stability and safety is tradition. Well, we've always done it this way. That's how we know we, we're doing it right. If you change that, well, how do we know whether we're right or wrong? Um, they value civilization. They're very big on civilization. Blue will look at other communities. They'll look at tribal communities. They'll look at warrior communities and they will think it's deeply uncivilized and therefore wrong. Now, this is natural of all stages. Most stages will look at those other stages and think, oh, that's wrong. Um, because they'll see it as different as themselves. They'll see the, the shadow of themselves in that, that, that they grew up and grew through some of that stuff and so they'll reject it. But the key is that while blue values civilization, it only values one civilization, theirs. And so there is no room to go, if you are a American that loves America and the nation of America and American civilization, American freedoms, there's no room for America to celebrate um, Norway, which is socialist and is different and doesn't go to war. And, you know, this isn't, this isn't how we think, you know, we don't do that. You know, that they uh, have legalized um, whatever it might be that you don't legalize, right? So um, I, I know these kind of areas are all uh, very touchy. And so I'm trying not to get too political or things like that, but I'm just gonna give examples of, there's, there's no way, it's a prime example might be America going, into Iraq and going, well, if we just give them democracy, if we just give them freedoms like America has, everything will be fine. Because we see the way Iraq works and think that that is wrong. And we see the way we work and go, that is right. So if we can just make that like this, like if we can make you like me, then you'll be okay. So very civilization focused, but radically singular in its civilization focus. My civilization, or no civilization. And so uh, there's a common way where a lot of um, blue nations that are radically Christian will look at Islamic nations, um, which are largely blue as well, and go, well, they are completely uncivilized. But what do the Islamic community say, right? So if you look at these Islamic nations, what are they saying about America, about the UK? They're saying that they're completely uncivilized, they're godless, they're, they're whatever, you know? They, 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 so it's the same argument by each group, and yet each group fails to see that it's kind of on some level arguing with itself. Now, that's not to say that Islam has it right and, uh, and Christianity has it right, or, or one is right and one is wrong. It's just to say that the fundamental base worldview, the human psyche that is uh, within those communities is the same. It's seeing through the same lens and it's interpreting different religions, different faiths differently, of course, but it's the same psyche at its root, at the root of it, we are seeing the same issue. And so this is something that's fascinating as well, is stages fight with themselves as well. We saw it's a red. Red doesn't play well with other reds because red is violent and seeks control and thinks if it's in control, it's right. Well, someone else that does that isn't gonna play well with that person, are they? Same at blue. If civilizations at blue think that my civilization is right, the only kind of blue that they'll interact well with is ones that agree. Um, so as soon as you cease to agree, as soon as you look different, there's gonna be this clash, this, this incompatibility. So blue also has um, a great focus on a greater purpose because it, it needs something that will bind the community together. Now, often this is the authority, so it could be the Pharaoh, the King, the, the whatever, it could be the Pope, it could be the pastor, um, it could be the pastor's vision, is the vision of the church and we're all gathered around it, or it could be God, it could be a greater vision of the end days or something like that. You know. The, it, Generally speaking though, there's a greater purpose. And this is why Christianity and other religions really bound, uh, uh, really 
gravitate to this uh, belief of uh, of a greater purpose as a kingdom on earth. You know, like we're going to heaven, we're going to we're avoiding hell. There's this greater cosmic purpose, as a battle in the heavens. You know, that's important to someone at stage blue. Um, they they need something more than just here and now because that drives them towards egotism. It drives them into stage, it keeps them in stage red, or it may even drive them into stage orange, which again swings to more of an individualistic, egocentric um, position. Um, and so they need to, this greater purpose to work as a group so that everyone uh, sacrifices for the whole. That's a very key principle to stage blue is sacrificing for the whole. The, the, the one is not as important as the many. That is the key. What is the greater good is a real blue chant. Um, blue values culture and morality, family values. Uh, they value respect for elders. Uh, they are very patriotic. They value authority, dress codes. Uh, prayer, you know, these are all very blue themes. They're, they're very into structure, organization, anything that will keep the status quo, um, anything that will make us uniform, seem more similar. There can be individuality at blue, Sage Blue, but on the whole, even that individuality runs together. It's, this, it's very similar. Um, that's a huge importance to someone at Stage Blue. Um, prayer and, and, and the Bible, um, Quran, very, very important at Stage Blue because these are, the Bible and Quran, they're, they're authority positions, something that we can look to and go, well, if that says it, we must do it. That says it, that's the truth, that's the final word on it. I don't care what anything else says, that's what that says. Now, of course, they fail to see that that's their interpretation of it. So you can have different people at blue having different interpretations and clashing heads with each other because their authority and the other person's authority is the same authority, but they just believe differently about it. Um, they've, they've interpreted that text differently, and that's gonna be a real problem for blue. They will clash over this. They will not like that because um, if you're right about your interpretation, then I'm wrong. And, and that is not something that Blue likes. It creates un uncertainty and instability. You'll see this again and again um, as we start shifting into stage orange, which is what most people that are going through uh, what's commonly right now called deconstruction or deconstruction, uh, deconstructing their beliefs. That's typically something that we're going to look at in the next stage, stage orange. And so people that start to shift into that new stage and are thinking more rationally, thinking more logically, they're starting to question, they're starting to doubt, they're starting to embrace more skepticism, that makes stage blue scared. It, it challenges our certainty and our safety and our security. It challenges our stability as a group. So they do not like that. And that's why they, they, they don't like um, they love having an argument and throwing Bible verses at you, but as soon as you say, well, there's another way to interpret that, they panic, they, they disappear, they get aggressive. There's a whole host of different uh, approaches. Someone that gets aggressive is probably more um, in stage red, um, but someone that's going to uh, fight you, argue with you, can still be at stage blue. The, the stage blue can still be quite uh, violent, can still be quite militant. Um, so there's a bit of an overlap between red and blue because blue will still fight to the death for its values if pushed. Um, okay, so if the civilization is challenged, it will respond in violence if need be. Um, so it's a lot more uh, defensive than offensive, that red might be quite offensive, um, but blue will defend itself and it will use violence and aggression if it needs to. Um, stage blue is all about self-control. Self-control is huge at this level, there, especially if we look at something like um, uh, in Christianity, self-control is huge at stage blue. It's all about controlling yourself, not leading into temptation, not falling away to sin, um, but maintaining a purity, maintaining your righteousness, you know, uh, controlling that sinful self, sinful desire. Um, they're all about chastity, keeping your uh, virginity, your sexual purity, um, really important to stage blue. They love loyalty. Um, blue lives in guilt. So guilt is a huge, huge uh, factor. Um, if you live constantly feeling like you're in guilt, you may well be, and I know this was a factor in earlier stages, especially red, um, but it's very likely that you're in stage blue. Um, stage blue God is very guilt inducing. Uh, you are constantly letting God down by doing something wrong and, and you, you feel guilty all the time. That's a very blue feeling. Um, now, even people that aren't religious will often live with a lot of guilt based on them not adhering to society structure and not being a good enough citizen, not being a good enough um, dad, mother, 
father, uh, same thing, uh, you know, brother, colleague, worker, uh, employee, you know, whatever it is, there's a lot of guilt in stage blue because this is focused on the whole, but we still ultimately have quite a drive towards selfish, selfishness at time. So there's, there's that wrestle and that produces a lot of guilt. Um, because obedience is one of the core principles of stage blue. It's really important to be obedient. Um, you're constantly fighting the temptation, the devil, sin, uh, to keep your purity. Uh, giving up worldly pleasures for the afterlife is a very blue mentality. It's again, the, this, this ultimate greater purpose than right now. And, and blue sees enjoyment and, and um, hedonism, uh, you know, happiness even at times can be seen as sinful. Um, because it, we are not supposed to be happy. The greater good is what's important, not me. And so I'm supposed to let, lay down my uh, sinful, selfish desires for the group. Now, often those sinful, selfish desires are really good desires. Uh, they're not sinful at all. They're just, they're just, it's okay to selfishly want to love your wife, to be a good dad, to, uh, to work hard and produce money so that you can extravagantly bless your kids. That's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Um, but blue often finds guilt here because blue will always have a hierarchy which goes something like God, church, or, 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 or God, uh, nation, uh, you know, uh, or your company, you know, whatever. But often it's your kids, your family, yourself. You're, you're quite a bit far down. Looking after yourself first is not a blue mentality. Um, that's, that's more going into orange, looking after God first, putting God first, putting God's kingdom first. Very, very, very blue mentality. Now, I know the Bible says that. If you're blue, that's immediately what you think, right? But the Bible says, and that's okay. There's other ways to interpret those things. There's other nuances to that that later stages would deal with. Um, but certainly blue will always think, well, it's important that I put God first. So you'll see pastors um, putting their church and their mission and their responsibility and their relationship with God and however they interpret all these things before their family. Um, very, very important for a pastor to do that. Um, and so this is where we see a breakdown um, in, in, in a lot of things uh, to do with the family, uh, relationships and such. So uh, there's a lot of dogma uh, and blue typically can be very, very rigid. Okay, so if, if you're at stage blue, if, you, if you're someone that finds yourself very rigid, you, you, can't, uh, you can't entertain gray. Gray is something that is not entertained at blue. Blue is black and white. Things are either or, good, bad, right, wrong. There isn't the middle ground really at blue. Maybe there's, it, it might be coming in for a lot of people that are overwhelmingly at blue but have a little bit of orange in them. They might be starting to entertain some of these gray areas, true. But the blue in these people cannot go there. They are still very rigid. They're still very black and white. Um, and so, like I said, there's this nuance to each and every one of us, which means we're, which is, is us being built from, uh, from a big, broad, uh, multicolored spectrum of all of these stages. Um, different parts of our psyche, different parts of our aspects of ourselves might be leaning towards different parts of the spiral, towards different stages. And so, um, it's very hard to say, well, you are 80% blue, so you will always be rigid and black and white. Well, maybe, but maybe not, because maybe in some areas, maybe you are like that, but actually in the area of family or the area of work, maybe in work, you've become a bit more orange, you're a bit more individualistic. Maybe you're, you've been driven quite capitalistically. Maybe you want to succeed. Maybe you want to start a business. These are all quite orange tendencies in some sense. So uh, there is nuance and overlap to, to how we are made up, okay? So hear me right. Again, I've probably said this a few times already in this video and I'll probably say it a few more times. Um, don't be too black and white with this model. Don't be too rigid with this model, right? Especially if you're blue and you need rigid and black and white. It's not gonna work very well. Um, blue really struggle with metaphors. They're very literal. So uh, things in the Bible that are meant to be taken as metaphor, as, as story, as poem, uh, as imagery, Blue still really struggles with doing that and often tends to take them very literally. Um, and so there's not much wiggle room uh, when talking to someone that's at Blue to say, for example, look at the context of Genesis and go, well, it was written in a poetic uh, style and it, it, and it copies the same format as other poems of the time. So maybe it's actually a poem, not meaning it's not true. 
So at later stages, people can go, well, of course a poem can be true, uh, or Shakespeare can write a play about fictional people and it's true. It doesn't mean it happened and those people existed, but there's truth in there. In fact, often um, something, uh, there's a famous quote, something uh, is so true, it has to be said in fiction. You know, this is something like Jesus telling parables. Sometimes a truth is so true and so powerful, you need a story to convey it. You need, you need a fictional reality to convey this deep truth. And Jesus used parables, right? We know that parables aren't literal. But again, Blue will take parables literally at times. So they'll look at something like um, the parable of uh, Lazarus and Abraham. Um, and they'll look at that and they'll build a literal concept of hell around this parable. But they won't look at other parables and build a literal concept of something. Um, and so it's very uh, interesting how, how even in that case, people will lean towards making something literal if it supports what they believe. Um, and so, yeah, very interesting dynamic within Blue there. Um, Blue is terrified of heresy, absolutely terrified of being a heretic, being wrong, um, because God will punish you if you are wrong. God will punish you if you, uh, if you fall into heresy and you will not be blessed. You will not be saved. You will not uh, go to heaven if you're in heresy. Um, and of course, it means everything I'm building, everything I'm doing is wrong, has been wrong, is a failure. That's how Blue sees these things. Blue doesn't see things even, Blue struggles to see, see failures as successes. Um, later on in, in later stages, there's this, a nuance and, 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 a, and a, a complexity to life that we can look at failure and go, oh, well, failure is often the, the, the platform to success. It's often the stepping stone towards success. Um, but Blue struggles to see that. Blue sees failure as failure. Really, really struggles to see that. And, and generally speaking, because it's so black and white, if you do something wrong, if you fail, anything like that, it's only bad. There's no room for it to be good. Um, it's a real struggle for Blue to, to, to perceive negative things as potentially good things. Um, at stage Blue, creation is for man. So uh, Blue sees mankind as the most important thing, the ultimate thing. We are the best, the biggest, the, the, the most amazing. And earlier stages see this and actually later stages still see things this way as well. Um, but Blue is very happy to take advantage of uh, the world. They, they don't see a problem with, with uh, if there's a limited resource, um, gold in the ground, there's only so much gold on this planet. Well, we're happy to dig it all up. Who cares? It's ours. That is for us. Um, if there is only so much uh, uh, carbon dioxide we can pump out into the planet, well, who cares? This planet was for us. We'll do what we do. We'll cover that. We'll come to that bridge and we cross it. Probably the world's going to end anyway, or the Earth's going to roll up and be destroyed because it says in the Bible that. Um, very blue mentality towards the Earth, towards creation. Um, now, what's interesting about that, and we'll cover this a bit more in a stage orange, orange, which is very um, selfish at times, very individualistic, very capitalistic, very... Um, about exploiting things so they can gain and develop and grow. Doesn't sound great, right? Uh, um, is very capable of exploiting this, this value in stage blue. So what you'll see is a lot of uh, people in faith are stage blue and have very little value for the earth other than what it does for them. And then what you see is a huge amount of business people um, who will happily destroy the earth they will happily spill oil into the sea and go, ah, well, it doesn't really matter. But they will appeal to the blue tendency of going, yeah, you're right, it doesn't really matter. This is for us, it's, it's, you know, it's, who cares? It's just fish, it's just water. It's just, that they have a very um, fragmented way that they see uh, creation. They don't see themselves as part of creation. They see themselves as above creation at stage blue. Um, really interesting dynamic. Blue is terrified terrified of excommunication. Blue is intensely terrified of being apart from the group, apart from the church, kicked out of the church, kicked out of our nation, kicked out of whatever it might be, the family. Very, very scared. Blue needs to be included to feel safe, secure, and certain. Those three values again and again and again, you'll hear me say in this video, safe, secure, and certain. So important to Blue and excommunication undoes them all. So it is the worst. Blue leadership is usually, like I said earlier on, it's usually just the next in line. So if someone was picked by God, well, God will pick the next person or that person that was picked by God will elect someone else. You'll see, you'll see a lot of leadership electing leaders, uh, a lot of kings picking kings, uh, kings giving their kingship to their son, 
um, pastors passing on the mantle to their sons, things like that. It's very, very blue, massively blue. Um, nepotism within uh, leadership structures is a very blue concept. It can also bleed into orange massively, but um, but it's much less common at other stages. A blue nepotism is rife. It's just how it, uh, people see things. They see things in blood rights and things like that. So let's look at some examples. Now, this is where we're gonna start finding more offense because um, people are going to fall. If you're watching this, you are likely to ha be in some group that I mess mention at some point in this. Now, the examples here are not always entirely blue. They partly blue or they have blue parts or dynamics to them. So please have um, a bit of uh, grace towards me, but also be aware if I mention something that, that stings, you'll probably hear me say something, you'll be like, oh yeah, obviously them, they are blue. Based on what you've said, that group is blue. Uh, but if I mention your group, I want you to be, um, I want you to try and be less defensive and more uh, contemplative. I want you to sit and think and go, why is that group blue? What is it about that group? Of course, as I go through some, I'll mention what it is at the times, but I can't do that for everything. Um, so I want you to think, well, what is it about that that's blue? And is that in me? And if so, how do I how do I fully embody that so that I can transcend and include that part of me? Because like I've said before, most people watching these videos um, are gonna be blue, uh, orange, or green. But I think the vast majority of people that watch these videos on this website are going to be orange, okay? So you probably are already um, working beyond blue, but there's gonna be parts of you that are blue that you need to transcend and include. You need to fully engage with so that you can grow beyond them and above them and, and, and past them, okay? Not trying to think of things hierarchically, but just think of things as an ongoing uh, journey. Again, the circles within circles analogy is really key for this, okay? So don't think of yourself as being above others, but think of others being within your framework of belief, but your framework of belief having just grown broader, okay? So yes, purple is a small circle, but red is a bigger circle, yes, but purple's inside it. You're not better than purple, you're, you are purple, but you're also red. Um, and when you become blue, you're not, uh, red's not some crappy ideology and belief over there that you've never been a part of. No, you are that, you've transcended it and you've included it in blue, which is a larger circle, which has red in it and has purple in it and so on and so forth, okay? So it's really important that you're, you don't allow yourself to view these other stages as, as bad, evil, <laughs> whatever it might be. Now, as I've said before, until you um, become largely stage yellow, it's gonna be really hard for you to do that. So work on that. Be really intentional about trying to perceive things that way because you're naturally going to demonize other stages. You're not going to want to include parts of those other stages. You're not going to want to accept that each stage has good parts of it that you need to include as you grow. Um, you're gonna want to just see negatives and reject, okay? So let's look at these examples. A great example of stage blue is the Middle Ages, okay? A prime example where it was all about safety, secu security, certainty, um, Puritan America, very, very blue. Um, we, we just want to be pure, right, whatever God says is the way. Um, Nonviolent fundamentalism is a great example of blue. So we looked at fundamentalism that, that can be violent is obviously more stage red, but fundamentalism moves into stage blue big time. And I would say often fundamentalism is more blue than red because largely it's going to be less violent. Um, the religious right are very, very blue. Um, they have um, very set beliefs, very rigid, very black and white. This is the way it is. The Bible says, or, or this political figure says, or this uh, Bible-believing Christian or leader or uh, pastor says, and therefore, that's the way it is, and that's how we want uh, our nation to be run, our church to be run, our worldview must be adhered to. Uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, very blue organizations, very right, wrong, lots of rules, lots of regulations, lots of order, marching in time, all very blue uh, mentality. Um, extreme patriotism can be very blue, very, my nation is better than your nation. My nation is right, your nation is wrong. My nation deserves to live, your nation deserves to die. If it comes to it, I'm happy to draw that line in distinction because my nation is God's nation, is the right nation, is the good nation. Um, most churches you will find are going to be somewhat blue, 
uh, almost all churches are going to be to some degree blue. So evangelical, uh, Roman Catholic, any other Catholic, uh, Eastern Orthodox, uh, Pentecostal, Charismatic, Lutheran, Methodist, Presbyterian, um, Salvation Army, you know, it doesn't matter. Largely, they are going to fall into the category of blue. Now, there are some some exceptions to that, and we will go over that in later stages. But on the whole, you're going to see most uh, uh, most churches, especially conservative uh, churches that are more rigid or more black and white, uh, value purity, morals, um, these sort of things. And again, I'm not saying purity or morals are bad. That's just a value that is in, is deep at stage blue. Might these might be values that you take with you as you transcend and include. Okay, so. Um, don't hear me wrong when I list examples at blue thinking that examples at blue are bad. They're not. They, they, there is no bad or good here. Um, I'm not even saying the terrorists are bad. I'm just saying that's where they are. Um, hopefully they transcend and include, right? So hopefully they transcend, they include whatever good parts there was about blowing up things, um, probably not much, um, and, and, and they grow and they develop. But right now, all they can be is militant, is violent, is, um, is passionate and zealous about how they see their faith, their God, their text, their Bible, their Quran. Um, but I'm not saying, this is not about bad and good, about right and wrong. That's not what we're talking about here. Um, so please hear me right when I'm giving you these examples. I'm not saying an example, uh, anything I list here is necessarily bad. It's just an example of people that have blue mentalities. And again, we're talking in generalities. So I'm saying evangelical churches are blue. What I mean is the vast majority of evangelical uh, churches. So if you go into the average evangelical church and there's 100 church members in there, that on the whole, more than 50% of those people will be more than 50% blue. Okay, or more than 50% of the policies in that church will be very blue policies. Okay, now I actually believe that in that specific example of evangelicalism, it would be much higher percentage than 50. But the point is that we're talking about generalities where the majority are blue. Okay, that's my, my point, for example. So try not to get too hung up on it. Okay, um, people like uh, Billy Graham or uh, Pope John Paul were very blue. Uh, Pope John Paul II, sorry. Uh, Billy Graham was very blue early on in his life. He actually, um, he, he became a lot more nuanced in his thinking. Um, you know, uh, Billy Graham later on in his life, you know, accepting things like uh, Christian universalism and, and, and things like that. Um, and so uh, Billy Graham having the nuance to meet with uh, uh, Christian leaders that were radically different. Uh, whereas you look at his, uh, his sons are incapable of doing that, right? Um, so Franklin Graham is, is much less capable of doing that. He, he only sticks to the politicians that he agrees with. Um, so Billy Graham was quite, towards the end of his ministry, became more and more um, nuanced and actually a lot uh, more uh, developed along the spiral. Um, but early on, Billy Graham, very blue. And, and generally speaking, his operation, the way he did things was very blue. I'm gonna go into the world, I'm gonna tell people that they need to change, that this is the way it is, this is the black and white way it works, that there's a heaven, that there's a hell. If you don't do this, you're gonna to go to hell. If, if you do do it, you go to heaven. Very, very black and white, very blue mentality. Um, Amish people, very blue. Um, excuse me. Jehovah Witnesses, uh, Mormons can be very blue uh, in their in their mentality. We see this a lot. Now, you know, I've mentioned these in the last three stages. A lot of these examples have come up. And that is because there are elements of purple, elements of red and elements of blue throughout these these examples. You're going to see these examples coming up a lot less as we move into orange. OK, so the next stage, we're going to see a lot of these examples um, uh, slow down. So what I will say is if you are at any of these kind of movements, if you're a part of any of these kind of movements, if you're Amish watching this, if you're Pentecostal, charismatic, evangelical, Lutheran, there's a very, very good chance that you are somewhat blue um, because we're gonna see those communities less and less involved at later stages, okay? Um, Islam, very blue. Zen Buddhism uh, and Buddhism as a whole, very blue. Um, so a lot of people think because the later stages are um, much more inclusive, much more broad. People go, oh, things like Buddhism must be in the later stages then. Not necessarily. B Buddhism can be very black and white, very rigid in how it approaches things and how it sees things. Um, and so at times, uh, and, and in a lot of ways, um, some of these more holistic uh, religions are still very, very blue, okay? 
patriarchy. Uh, so any kind of patriarchy systems, uh, communities, very blue, generally speaking. People that are, are value and see men as uh, qualified leaders and women as not to be qualified as leaders, very, very blue mentality. Um, more so than any other uh, stage, maybe even more so than Red. Red would accept a female leader if she was strong enough to take the position. Um, now, at certain stages in, in Red and certainly throughout history, that required elements that women were less capable of uh, in many ways because they didn't have the brute force and strength. And it didn't come down to weapons at that point. There wasn't many very weapons. It was literally, can you wrestle this person to death? You know. And so, generally speaking, there was more men that could do that than women. Um, so, but uh, a stage red uh, society would respect a strong, powerful woman that was more strong and more um, authoritative, more quote unquote alpha um, than the other men in that community, they, they would. Whereas at Blue, there is no room for women in leadership. They do not like women leadership at all. Now, there might be some, exam uh, some exceptions here and there. Um, so I'm, I'm not removing the possibility of that because um, some people at Stage Blue are starting to open up to that. I, I, I'm unsure, to be honest with you, if that's more them starting to lean into orange, um, starting to be able to do rational thought and, and trying to think differently. I, I'm not sure. I, I would probably say it maybe is, um, but it could be that it's still possible at Blue to, to have that. I, I would say it's probably more leaning into orange. Um, purity culture, right? That the whole um, the whole purity movement is extremely blue, very very blue mentality, um, and, and we see you know the explosion of purity, the explosion of the anti-abortion movement in the '60s, where the church was pro-abortion before uh, before the '60s. You know uh, that wasn't uh, that wasn't an issue for the church. The Catholics were very anti it, um, but the Protestant church was was fine and, and largely voted for. Uh, pro-abortion, uh, pro-choice. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I should say pro-choice, probably not pro-abortion is the wrong phrase uh, there, but sorry, but, but the, the Protestant church was pro-choice up until um, the, the whole moral majority movement. That changed what the Protestant church's position was and it became more Catholic. Um, and so that is very blue mentality. How can we, how can we see um, a issue that brings us all together, gives us more certainty, more stability, more uh, uh, more safety. Um, that's where where, where it will come to. We'll, we'll draw the line in things. So we won't want um, homosexuality to be okay because there's Bible verses that say it's not. So it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to cause us to feel uncertain, unsafe. So no, the line is drawn. No, definitely no homosexuality. So um, equality is not something that the blue movement is very big on. So you look at um, slavery was very blue. Uh, you know, there was maybe some elements of red in there, but people could be really quote unquote nice slave uh, masters um, and they were probably more blue than red, but they were still slave masters. They still had some Bible verses. You look at the, the, the movement as slavery was being ab abolished um, the majority of people that were fighting in the corner for keeping slavery were Christians and they were using Bible verses. There was pastors uh, reading out the Bible and, and saying that God's will was for, for um, men to own other humans um, as long as they were of a certain race or a certain skin color. Um, and so very blue in this uh, mentality, the caste systems are huge in blue. So when you look at somewhere like India um, and you see God ordained caste systems so that uh, this group, the lowest group are always low. If you're born into that group, um, you would die into that group. You cannot become a quote unquote better human. You are just stuck in that caste. And the same for if you are rich and powerful, you are in that position. And it was very manipulative. Well, why am I better than everyone else? Well, because God said I'm better than everyone else. Well, how did God say it? Well, I was born into this family. Oh, well, how does that family best? Oh, because God said, well, how do we know they're best? Oh, because they were born into the family. But, oh, so it's just really whatever family you were born into. That's what God says is good or bad. It's the same deal with something like slavery, right? How do we know they're meant to be slave? Oh, well, they're of this descent. They're this color. Um, how do we know we're not? Oh, because we're white. We're American. We're British. We're Spanish, whatever it is, right? Um, but very... Um, very into caste systems, very into structure and organization and people being in or people being out is a huge blue uh, mentality. Um, things like focus on the family, very, very blue 
mentality. Um, monotheism, uh, very blue, just having one God gives us more certainty, more stability. Having multiple gods is far too complex and far too uncertain. Um, it, it just isn't something that works very well in a blue society. And that's why you see as a lot of civilizations uh, emerge and become blue and we have more structure and more society, we see um, pantheistic uh, religions and polytheistic religions kind of disperse and disappear and monotheism kind of rise up and appear um, because it's much more um, congruent with a civilization, with a blue mentality. Um, empires, of course, very blue. How do we bring together lots of different cities? Well, we need an empire and we need some rules and laws and we need people to govern them. We need a military. We need um, a, a ultimate high power, an emperor who's over all the other kings and all the other princes. Um, that's very blue, very structured, very organized, very um, hierarchical. Um, we need codes of law, obviously, so very legal. So uh, blue will love uh, the law, having rules, having regulations, having juries and jurors and, um, and judges, uh, police to man the law. Uh, blue will typically always side with the police over whoever the police say is a criminal. And so we see um, in a lot of uh, parts of the world, we see uh, police that are abusing their power or militaries that are abusing their power, blue will typically side with the police and the military even when there's good evidence that they've abused their power because these are the, the structures of power and these are the people that keep us safe and secure. And so th obviously they're right, even though it seems like they're wrong, I'm sure they're right. Um, and so uh, this is why we see so much um, people getting away with abuse and, and things like that is because ultimately in a blue civilization, blue culture, people will generally find it very hard to, uh, the voices that speak out against that will very uh, find it very hard to rise above the parapets and be given a platform. And if they are given a platform, they'll be quickly pulled down by stage blue. Um, and so you will see this again and again, and it's, um, it's only gonna grow um, until there is more people at a later stage than there are people at stage blue, um, which I think we're on the cusp of in many uh, countries. Um, and so uh, I think a lot of Europe has, has developed beyond that um, and, and we see that less. And I feel like America is probably starting to teeter. Uh, the, the amount of people at stage blue is, is probably uh, less, in fact, it's certainly less than the people at stage orange, but the vocal uh, uh, majority is still probably quite blue in America. And that's what needs to change really. Um, and so try not to be political, but uh, largely speaking, if this is the sort of thing that you uh, really dislike, it's important that you become more vocal, that you vote, that you, you act and, uh, and you speak up for what you think is incorrect um, because stage blue will always do that. They will loudly speak up against what they think is incorrect um, and wrong because they demand justice. Now, justice is again, what they think is justice. Um, so they can think that justice is um, power abusing individuals. So a lawmaker or a president or a politician does something deeply wrong. Well, he's God's chosen person. He's the important uh, authority figure. So actually justice is whatever they need to be protected over uh, what we need as a people or what is right. And so justice isn't even always about what's right and wrong, it's about what's perceived to be right and wrong or uh, more subtly, what's perceived to be uh, good for the group, for the community, for, and specifically my group, my community. Anyway, sorry, keep going on all these tangents, but hopefully this is building a picture for you, a, 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 a kind of a web so that you can see what, what blue can look at. Most of the Middle East is gonna be blue. Uh, so when you look at a lot of the Middle East, um, and it's transitioned mostly out of red um, and is largely blue. You're gonna see a little bit of orange in the Middle East here and there, especially some countries like Saudi um, are, are teetering into uh, orange, but also leaning back into red. So there's a, there's a spectrum there um, within the Middle East, but largely the bulk is gonna be somewhere in blue. Um, Palestinians, but also Zionists, right? So you've got both sides of the equation are blue. So a great example of blues uh, clashing head. Um, and so you can both be stage blue, but if your civilization is different to my civilization, 
we are not going to see eye to eye and we will fight, we will war. Um, Confucian China, Hasidic Jews are very blue, very uh, law observing, God fearing. Um, Republicans as a whole generally are blue orange. Okay, so uh, teeter between this stage of blue and um, and the uh, the stage of orange, which we're going to talk about next. Okay, so that's largely where where you'll find people that are at stage. Um, Republican because they they do uh, tend to Republicans want to have more of a, a God chosen leader uh, rather they yeah they'll, they'll use democracy and they do believe in voting and seeing who who is uh, chosen by majority but if they could ultimately just have God's leader in charge they would take it uh, generally speaking most most Christians that lean uh, towards a Republican bent would probably lean towards that um, now again this is not about right and wrong uh, there are plenty of reasons that, that Republicans are right on a lot of things. So this is not uh, about Republican versus Democrat or uh, one party versus another or anything like that. But it's a great example of, of quite blue mentality is a lot of Republican thinking. And again, the nuance, that means that maybe more than 50% of how they think might be blue. And even then, maybe not, maybe maybe that could be orange. I'd say it's quite, um, quite split between the two. Um, Neo-Nazis, okay? very, very blue mentality. We are the right people, everyone else is wrong, right? We hate uh, black people, Jews, uh, you know, people of mixed race, only us, only my group. Um, very, very uh, blue mentality, alt-right, uh, very uh, blue mentality. Um, Mormons, I think we've mentioned. Hinduism, again, so like we mentioned Buddhism, but in Eastern religions are deeply, uh, susceptible to being blue as well. We're not just talking about Western religions here. Um, and so don't feel that there's just this clear cut line where one is, is clearly more evolved or more enlightened than the other or anything like that. Both uh, tend to be very, very blue in their, their mentality. Um, something like uh, the war on Christmas is a brilliant example of blue, okay? So blue people care about what's right and wrong. They see anything that changes uh, their society, their grasp on society as dangerous. And so when people get worried about the war on Christmas because we're not talking about Jesus enough, or it's not got some crosses in it, or, or you wanna call it holiday instead of Christmas and things like that, that is a very blue mentality. People at later stages will generally look at that and go, huh, oh, well, who cares? It's just a word, right? Or it's just, it's not explicitly about Jesus anyway, and actually we can still make it about Jesus, the people that want it to be about Jesus. Why am I trying to control someone that doesn't want to make it about Jesus? You know, so they're gonna look at like all the different nuances and look at it from different perspectives and, and come to a more rational, well-rounded conclusion, even if they still then go, no, we'd like to have red Starbucks cups with happy Christmas on it, or whatever it is that Starbucks is supposed to do at that time, I'm not sure. Um, but that's a prime example of stage blue. Uh, you're scaring us, you're taking away what we perceive as uh, as Christmas, as the, the right thing to do in this nation, in this country, in this, in this, in this group of people, in whatever, in this organization. You're scaring our, and, you're, and you're, you're threatening our safety, our security, our certainty. Don't do that. We will go to war over this, okay? Even if it looks like shopping at a different coffee shop, right? Um, things like uh, virginity pledges. Brilliant stage blue practice, uh, you know, ritualizing something that is very, very stage blue important. It's massively important to someone at stage blue. This is less of a focus to people at later stages. Doesn't mean they don't value virginity uh, necessarily, but it means it's not a focus that they would have a whole system in place, that they would have rings, that they would have ceremonies, you know, uh, they would have uh, purity balls and all sorts of different things like that. Um, that's very, very blue. That's, um, that's how do we overly um, focus on a tiny thing that makes us feel secure and safe because I'm in control of that. If I can just keep that, then I feel safe and secure. That makes me feel comfortable. Um, that makes me feel more certain about my faith and my belief. Gay conversion therapy was very blue, can be very red. So there's a lot of um, things that ended up leaking out that showed that gay conversion therapy could be very aggressive, very violent, very unhealthy. But generally speaking, um, especially today where it's largely illegal uh, around the world, thankfully, um, it still happens just in veiled, uh, veiled disguises. And so we saw some of that recently and I posted some stuff online about that. Um, but there's different ministries that are still doing gay conversion therapy, but very blue, very blue mentality. Well, gay people are wrong and they need to be right. 
so that they can be saved, so that I can feel comfortable. If they're right and they're still gay, well, I'm wrong and I'm not comfortable. I'm not secure. I'm not certain about some of my faith now. So I need them to become like me. That is the key. They need to become like me for their, them, their safety and security, as far as I see it. But largely, ultimately, this is a deep ego trip. It's largely for me to feel safe and certain. I don't feel safe and certain if gay people are okay. If they're validated by my group, by my society, then I don't know where I stand. Um, and so gay conversion therapy is a, a very blue mentality. Um, things like Victorian England, uh, the colonial South, uh, Imperial Japan, uh, the concept of serving your country. Um, so they've done interesting polls uh, throughout different countries that are very patriotic. And largely countries that are very patriotic would happily serve their country whether they knew the task was right or wrong. Because the task is always right, right? If my country says so, I will serve it. Um, and so this is what we see in certain countries that very strongly uh, value their, uh, their, their military. And I think, of course, we should be thankful for people that are willing to lay their lives down for others and things like that. But when, when military people come back from war and speak out against it, there's this real disconnect. Blue don't know what to do with that. They really don't because they do not like uh, any, um, uh, anyone speaking out against the country, uh, against... Uh, against Disrespect in a country, you know, kneeling, not kneeling for the flag is like the least blue thing you can do. Blue people get upset if you do not kneel for the national anthem, if you uh, throw a flag on the floor or you burn a flag. Whoa, this is huge, really bad, really disrespectful, really evil. Um, and so uh, very, very blue mentalities, those. Uh, we mentioned missionaries in stage red. So missionaries is also very, very stage blue. Um, it, it, missionaries kind of cusp between red and blue. So at the worst uh, level for missionary at stage red, at its most extreme, it looks like the Crusades, right? You go into a country and you kill people to save them, uh, or you kill people if they don't get saved, and that very strongly convinces a lot of people to get saved. It's a very effective missionary tactic at, at some points. Um, but at the other end of the spectrum at blue, uh, missionaries are um, a lot more loving, a lot more generous, a lot more gracious. They genuinely just want people to be better, right? So it is that mentality of like, well, if only we could go into Iraq and give them democracy, they'd probably be fine. It's the same mentality. If only we could go into this Islamic community and get them saved, they'd be fine. Or if only we could go into this uh, tribal community in Africa and teach them the gospel, they would all be fine. That's a good desire uh, born out of love and, and faith and, and, and compassion. Um, but it does fail to see different dynamics. It fails to see the spiral, of course. It fails to see um, how people evolve naturally and how they progress. It also fails to see uh, the incompatibility at times where someone who is radically stage blue, just think how likely it is for an Islamic person to come into your church. If you're in stage blue, come into the generic evangelical church, preach a message about how Allah um, uh, was revealed by Muhammad and he is the true truth. He is the next stage of Christianity. And if Christianity just opens its eyes and awakes, it will be, it will step into the true faith, which is revealed by Prophet Muhammad, blessed be his name, and we'll all follow Allah. How many people in the church are going to get saved? None, right? I mean, this is like a radical blue mentality where my Bible says I'm right, God's right, the pastor's right, my elders are right, I'm right, my husband or wife are right. You know, like, we are right. You, you're not going to, it's not going to go well for that um, person, that well-meaning Islamic person trying to save people. Um, and so it, it fails to see some of those dynamics, right? Because it probably could see that. It would go, well, an Islamic person would never manage to convert me. But it doesn't see the, the, the opposite to be true. It doesn't see how hard it would be for a missionary from Christianity to go into a heavily stage blue religion and convert them. So generally speaking, what you're going to see is a, as a stage blue missionary, you will convert almost no stage blue uh, people of different faith. Who you will convert is stage red and stage maybe purple if, if they can kind of go through the spire, if you can make some funnel for them to work through red into your blue religion. Um, that will happen often. And that's, uh, so it's interesting studies where later stages, um, orange and green, go into prisons, which are largely red environments. And they have church communities. So orange churches, uh, green churches go into prisons and almost have no success. 
they maybe have some success in working with prisoners in helping them relate to each other, maybe do some forgiveness ministry and some restoration and reconciliation ministry. Some of that stuff works, but they almost never see someone becoming saved, quote unquote, Christian, not part of their group. But blue ministries, blue Christian uh, ministries have huge success in prisons. Why? Because blue is the natural evolution for a red person. Red isn't going to evolve into orange. They're not going to evolve into uh, green. They're going to evolve and develop and grow into blue. And so it's really important to understand uh, if, if you're a blue missionary, who your audience is, who are you most likely to reach, who is going to be ready to hear what you have and how can you help them grow and develop. Um, prayer in school, sanctity of marriage, um, these kind of ideas, very, very blue, similar to kind of the, the virginity um, and against the homosexuality agenda, things like that. Very, very blue mentality. Um, communism, Marxism, uh, very, very blue. Um, and not, yeah, very, very blue. Um, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Now we've mentioned in the last two stages, an eye for a life. Now, if we look back through uh, the history of religion, we can see that typically uh, everything was done through a very heavily caste system. So uh, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth was quite an evolved thought because generally speaking, an eye for an eye was only between two common people, two a high caste people or two slaves. So if a slave caused another slave to lose an eye, then they would lose an eye. Or if a rich person was to cause another rich person to lose an eye, they would lose an eye. But say a rich person caused a common person to lose an eye, well, they would just have to pay them something through the eye. Or vice versa, if a common person caused a rich person to lose their eye, the rich person could kill the common person. So it's this kind of caste system in place. Now at blue, we start to see an evolution in that. There seems to be a bit more of, of, of an, uh, um, an equality. Now it's very, very loose equality, okay? And we'll see this become more established in orange, but early, uh, uh, mid to late blue is ready to see an eye for an eye. Let's treat everyone as equals. Now it's still really violent, right? You caused me to lose an eye, so get me the spoon, I'm gonna take your eye right? Very violent way to resolve things, right? There probably is better ways to resolve losing an eye. Um, but that is uh, where stage blue is at and that's how they're going to operate. Um, so everything is very cast uh, at this stage, but it, it's, it's moving away from caste systems uh, in some ways, in some areas. Um, yeah. Okay, great. We're done with examples. Okay. So let's look at the Bible. Okay, uh, let's look at some of these Christian outworkings. Um, I hope you're realizing that this is a longer video and these videos are gonna be longer now because these are much more applicable. I'm hoping you're seeing as I'm reading this out, as I'm talking about it, if you aren't at this stage, um, and you may well not be, a lot of people around you are gonna be at this stage. This is gonna give you real keys in how to interact with people at this stage, how to understand, how do I, how do I frame my words? How do I approach these people? How do I post something on Facebook when I know a lot of the people reading it are blue? How do I do that? Um, and if you're blue, this is gonna be wonderful for you. I'm glad that I'm able to give you more content because it's gonna give you more areas to, to work on and grow and develop and, and really en embrace and engage with so that you can eventually start hitting the ceiling and think about transcending and including. So the Bible, okay? So about, this is quite interesting, okay? Generally speaking, uh, it is believed broadly throughout blue to be the word of God. So very similar to earlier, um, it's, it's quite literal. Um, but however, only about 60 to 70% uh, studies have shown within blue communities, within evangelical mainline churches, um, only about 60 to 70% believe it to be word for words true, okay? Um, however, almost 100% believe it to be true in a general sense, okay? So even violent and uh, vengeful stories um, are true, are, are the way that God operates. Um, the Bible reflects perfectly who God is, okay? So it's not to be questioned in any way, shape, or form. And the Bible contains all the answers to anything you would ever need to know. So uh, the Bible is gonna be the go-to document. As we said, you know, when people say, well, you know, I think this, people will shut down at blue and go, but the Bible says this, so I can't even talk, right? Uh, that's not even a conversation I'm ready to have. Um, if we look at the homosexuality series on this website, on the Grace Course, um, I look at all the different views 
and all the different interpretations of the different Bible passages so that people can look at it more from a multi-perspective and come to their own conclusions and maybe start understanding how other people see it. Stage Blue will never be able to watch from beginning to end my series on homosexuality. It just isn't going to be possible. They're going to blow a gasket, you know, their brain is going to explode because they're just going to go, but the Bible says, but the Bible says, but the Bible says all the way through. It's going to be really hard for someone at Stage Blue to get through something like that because they can't see it from multiple angles. The Bible says, and the Bible says means my interpretation. I don't know that the Bible says means my interpretation. I think the Bible says means the Bible says. Everyone around me that has uh, grown past stage blue or are beyond stage blue, they're gonna look at me and go, oh yeah, well, their interpretation of the Bible. They're still gonna go, you know, I like the Bible and I can see it, it says something different, but stage blue can't do that, they can't see that. How does stage blue see God? So stage blue sees God as a righteous judge, okay? God is certainly a he, there's no question about that at Stage Blue. Uh, you know, the, the shack is not gonna sell many copies at Stage Blue, uh, that, at least not ones that people get through to the end and like it. Stage Blue is gonna really find that controversial, the concept of God being uh, without gender or even God being able to be represented as another gender other than male. Not possible to someone at Stage Blue. God is a man, he is male. Says so in the Bible right? The Bible tells me so. Um, so he's, he's this powerful male figure, um, very, uh, very much like him red. He's a king. He's a ruler. Um, he's, he's on high. Um, he's a judge. He's a righteous judge. So he does what's right. But again, how we interpret what's right is because the Bible says. So what does the Bible say? Now, there's often things in the Bible where it's confusing what it says. And you'll quickly find out where stage blue are because they'll say it's clear. They'll go, well, the Bible says, and they'll pick which one they like. And they'll try and work around the other one to make it fit their interpretation. Now, we all do that to some degree. That's how we interpret texts is we, we try and um, interpret them in a way that makes sense holistically. Um, but Bl Stage Blue is very, very good at that. Um, Stage Blue sees God as um, loving and vengeful. So again, they're going to struggle with the phrase, uh, God is love. They will need God to still be wrathful, vengeful, just. Um, so they need a God is love, but he's also just. They need that last bit of the sentence, much like stage red. Um, so uh, they, they can't accept that God is love uh, has a period after it. Um, it. It's just not possible because, well, God does judge people with the Bible. The Bible, see, the Bible says, look at the Old Testament. He judges people, he kills people. Look at even in the New Testament, it says he'll come and judge people. Um, and, and my interpretation of judgment, my interpretation of wrath, my interpretation of uh, a day of judgment is bad, it's negative, it's, it's full of violence and death and hell and punishment, right? So very, um, very much interpreting it through their particular lens. Um, God is separate from creation um, but has come down to us through the person of Jesus. So God is seen as a second person uh, with a second person perspective, right? So God is seen as a person, as a figure, as, a, as an old man in the sky, that kind of idea. So where earlier stages um, were very second person, Stage Blue really struggles to move beyond this as well. They stay very, uh, very much in a second person of God. They strongly reject um, a first person notion of God. So the fact that God is within us and divine and that, and that there's a divinity within human, humanity. They might start to acknowledge that there, that God resides in you as this separate second person, as the, this, this individual God is within you, um, but he's very separate from you. There is no divinity within humanity. Hum humanity can't be in and of itself divine as created by God. Um, so a first person God uh, or divinity is utterly rejected at this stage. And a third person divinity is very disliked as well. This ethereal, all encompassing God who is in everything. God is in that rock. He's in that hedge. He's in that fox. He's in that person that's not a believer. God is in all of that. Um, that's not really liked. Now they will uh, ultimately concede to that at a push. 
uh, because there are some scriptures and it's hard to work around some of those Bible verses, but generally speaking, they're gonna want God to be seen largely as a second person, as, a, as an individual. Um, and so God is a being that we can talk to and has a personality, and that personality is love and judgment and just and wrathful. Um, God controls everything, generally speaking, at Stage Blue. Very much, um, he controls weather patterns, car crashes, you name it, he controls it. Um, now, there are uh, many people at Stage Blue that are uh, advocates for free will, um, so it's not always that case. Um, and free will is, generally speaking, um, held more commonly at some later stages. Um, but so is uh, radical uh, uh, predestination as well. So don't, don't get too lumped down and thinking one is better or worse. And if you're thinking later stage is better, earlier stage is worse, you're still falling for this mentality. You're still thinking this is a hierarchy. You're still thinking, how do we get rid of the bad stuff and move up the, the spiral so we can be a better uh, us? And, and yeah, there's some truth to that, but you can't see it like that because when you see it like that, you're gonna halt your growth. You're gonna stunt your growth. You're gonna force yourself um, to, to become fractured and, and not grow healthily. Um, so, so try and let go of that if you can, okay? Please just don't, don't let yourself go into that as much as you can. It's gonna be really hard. Uh, I find it really hard as well, um, but it, it's really natural to do that. God is up in heaven, okay? We are on earth, God is in heaven. Um, God is uh, a distant uh, reality. He, there, there, is, um, there is a possibility for intimacy and a relationship with God though at stage blue, which wasn't there at red. Red was too far fear driven, but stage blue has evolved in its understanding of God in the sense that they understand that God can love and connect and, 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 and there is um, intimacy there with the Father. So people can start to understand that the Father's heart is good, it's loving, um, but don't get too far, he's still just, he's still, uh, he's still wrathful, he's still got a side that is to be feared. Um, okay, so what about Jesus? So Jesus, um, he, he, um, he is God in person come to earth. He is the, the, the flesh of God in, in a sense. Uh, he, he is uh, God become humanity. Um, he, is a, he seeks to have a personal relationship with you and you must seek to have a personal relationship with him. So generally speaking at Stage Blue, people focus much more on having a relationship with Jesus than they do with the Father because the Father is still a little bit um, wrathful and, and scary, but Jesus has a lot less of that in him. Where at Stage Red, they focused heavily on Jesus as a, as a warrior, as someone that was killing, that was coming back to punish and run everyone through with his sword dipped in blood. And um, Stage Blue lets go of a lot of that Jesus and starts to, excuse me, see Jesus as much more a close, intimate friend, a brother. He is only revealed in the Bible generally, okay? So um, there's very little room for connection with Jesus uh, as a um, as an encounter. Um, now, this, this still does happen at Stage Blue, um, but often uh, this is much more uh, earlier stage, stage purple, or much later stage, stage kind of green and on. Um, so very rarely uh, was people that are fully at stage blue um, have those kind of encounters because they want something much more clear cut, cut and dry. Something I can pick up the Bible, see, oh, I read the person of Jesus, that's who I relate to. So even when there is um, relationship with Jesus, he's not gonna disagree with the Bible. So if, if you have an encounter with Jesus and the pastor says, well, does that line up with the Bible? If the answer was no, the encounter would be thrown out immediately because it needs to line up with what the Bible says. Um, so at this stage, the Bible is still in some sense kind of elevated above the person of Jesus, right? If the person of Jesus walked into the room and said something, if it didn't line up with the Bible, and again, our interpretation of the Bible, it would largely be rejected. And this is where you get famous sayings like if Jesus came into the church today, most churches wouldn't accept him. And it's probably true because he wouldn't line up with their interpretations of the Bible because we're all susceptible to reading an ancient text differently. Um, Jesus came to die in our place for sin. So very similar to stage red at this point. Um, penal substitution still exists at stage blue and is still probably the prominent, uh, predominant view at stage blue. Um, but the, the violence and the anger part of it is probably softened a little bit. We, we focus much more on the loving act of Jesus 
than the wrathful act of God. Now that's not entirely true. Um, so, so people at stage blue will still do that, but generally um, it's gonna be an overlap between stage red and blue. So if you're holding to penal substitution, you probably have some red elements that really love the wrath and the anger, but you're probably shifting into blue as well if, if, you, if you really focus largely on the, the grace and the love of Jesus and how beautiful a sacrifice that is of him to sacrifice himself for you. And, and if you focus on the relationship with Jesus that comes out of it, you probably are leaning more into blue, but you've definitely got some red stuff that needs worked out. Now the problem is you're gonna really struggle uh, because stage blue needs penal substitution to exist because this is what's right, this is what gives me certainty, security, stability. If you take away the way I get saved, well, am I saved, right? So it's gonna really struggle to let go of that, but it can't become fully blue without letting go of it, right? It can't, it can't progress beyond red without letting go of penal substitution. So you're gonna see a, a massive a conflict in, in that and a real struggle. And you'll see at stage blue, when you push people, a lot of them will really, really struggle with the notion that God uh, was gonna punish and pour his wrath and enjoy that. And, and so there's gonna be a little bit of disconnect because they're wanting to leave that red. They're starting to hit the ceiling of red, but they don't know how to let go of this belief because that's what gives me certainty. And so generally speaking, the best thing to do for someone that's at stage blue and holding on to penal substitution is give them something like Christus Victor, which still has um, this punishment, uh, but the punishment is focused on sin. Um, and so Jesus comes, he gathers sin, he takes all the punishment and takes it away, but it's less angry. It's God isn't angry at people, he's angry at sin. So it's a kind of like a, a switcheroo. Think of Indiana Jones with the weighted sandbag and the, and the precious uh, um, uh, ancient artifact, and he switches them around, right? It's a bit like that. Um, but that's often a very, very helpful tool. Whether you believe in Christus Victor or not, it's a very helpful stepping stone for helping people come out of red into blue that are ready to do so. Okay, little tidbit there. That's probably a, uh, that, that, that's worth its weight in gold, trust me. Uh, that will really help a lot of people. But uh, that's, that's probably leaning towards the end of this video where we talk about working with people at, at Stage Blue. Um, so at Stage Blue, we, we see Jesus and Christ are are still just names for the same person. So it's just two names for the same person. It's, there's no distinction between Jesus and Christ that we will see at later stages. There's gonna be more nuance to that. There's gonna be a bit more um, depth to the, the concept of Christ. Um, Jesus is fully God and fully human. And so the humanity of Jesus starts to be accepted in, this, in a way that wasn't accepted at stage purple or red. Um, and so that's uh, again, a, a progression that helps us in ourselves and prepare for stage orange, which is gonna to start to see more of an identity in itself and a value in itself and, and perhaps see somewhat um, of a divinity within ourselves, a, a God-inspired uh, likeness and image within ourselves. Uh, so that's gonna really help that we now see Jesus as fully God, but also fully human. Um, the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed are heavily leaned on at this stage uh, to define Jesus um, because these are established creeds, black and white, we like that at stage blue. They're ancient, traditional, we like that at stage blue. They're agreed upon across very broad denominations, which we like, it makes us feel more certain and safe. So even when I disagree with the Methodists, well, they agree with the Apostles' Creed. And even, in fact, the Catholics agree with the Apostles' Oh, great, well, now we're feeling very safe, right? Um, and so it, it helps make us feel more certain and secure and safe. Um, and so that's gonna be a key way that we establish who Jesus is. We're gonna lean back on these earlier creeds very heavily. Um, Jesus, generally speaking though, um, is still um, at his core, the person that absorb, absorbs God's wrath. It, it, the purpose of Jesus, the existence of Jesus in a sense is solely for our benefit, it's solely so that we can uh, connect with God. And, and without Jesus, we certainly would not have been able to connect with God. So what about prayer and worship? Um, sorry, I'm itching my nose nonstop. I've got an itchy nose, so hopefully that doesn't annoy you too much. Um, it's annoying me. Um, what about prayer and worship? So prayer and worship shifts from magical to more mythical. Now at magical, uh, magical thinking believed if we could find the right words, 
uh, and ritual, we could control things, okay? So that's that's how a magical uh, interaction worked. So you would see, again, like we were talking about in earlier stages, you know, they would use something like, in Jesus' name is quite incantational. Uh, if we can just say, in Jesus' name, then it will happen. If we can just uh, do the right thing, then it will happen. Mythical uh, shifts somewhat. Mythical believes if we can find the right God, and ask him the right way, we can control things. So it shifts from our behavior and our, our wording particularly, more to connecting with God and understanding God correctly, and then asking him correctly. It's, it's very, it's very uh, methodical, uh, it's very rule-based, it's very, it's very belief-based, it's all about what we believe. Um, and so we're seeing a shift, as we look at our prayer and our worship, we're gonna see a shift towards that. Um, so there's two main uh, modes of prayer for someone at stage blue. There's gonna be the distant mode, um, which uh, you know seeks design interve divine intervention from God on far in human affairs. So God is up there and he comes down here to interact or, or he acts from up there on things down here. And so um, that's the distant model. It's asking supernatural being to heal me in the natural. Um, but there's also the personal model in, in prayer and worship, and, and that is um, more communion with God. It's, it's worshiping him, it's thanking him, uh, it's, it's um, engaging with a God here and now that I can feel that can tangibly uh, uh, be experienced so long as it fits our Bible, so long as we can find it in the Bible, but there is that, that personal element. So we've got a distant model and a personal model kind of coming together. Um, some, uh, some people within stage blue will still be very exclusive in prayer and worship. So you'll see some people, maybe for example, not allowing people to do the Lord's Supper if they believe differently, um, if they're from a different denomination or a different group. So there's still some levels where uh, communal worship is an uh, inclusive thing. It requires you to tick the boxes. It requires you to be part of the quote unquote club. Um, Okay, let's look at sin and salvation. So sin starts to evolve at stage blue. Um, so while in earlier stages, sin was all about not disobeying God. Well, that is primarily what sin is at stage blue still. It's still about we cannot disobey God. God tells us to do something, we must do it. God tells us not to do something, we must not do it. That is what's really important. However, sin also becomes about harming other people. So even though God may not have obeyed it, for me to do something that would harm my wife, maybe say something that's not necessarily very nice, I've not broken any quote unquote laws that God gave me. However, because she is hurt, I can see that as sinful, as, as something that's not good, as something that God would not like, um, or, or that is not part of my identity in uh, God. Um, and so there's an there's a, there's a evolution where we start to rationally see sin as well. So it's not just because God said it, that's primarily it, and I'm talking like 80 to 90% primarily, but we're also starting to rationalize a bit where we, we kind of start to understand God's heart and go, oh, God wouldn't have liked it when I said that thing that upset that person. That's also a sin, right? Um, it, however, still must be dealt uh, through salvation, uh, uh, it, so it has to be uh, something that, that people uh, ask for forgiveness for, ask Jesus into their heart over, ask for, they confess, you know, all of that process is still very key at stage blue. Really important we go through those stages. But also stage blue requires penitence, they require um, some form of uh, practice typically. And so stage blue will need uh, you to, to say sorry, to ask for forgiveness, but generally speaking, stage blue will also require you then to make it right. And, and that's, a, that's actually a very healthy and good progression. Um, you know, if you've harmed someone, again, for example, say I said something that really upset my wife, Tilly, um, yeah, I would say, God, oh, forgive me for being a bit grumpy and unfair and unkind to my wife there, but I'd also hopefully go and speak to my wife, right? Because ultimately, if, uh, Stage Blue wouldn't be able to see it this way, but Stage Blue would see the ultimate sin as against God and the secondary sin against their wife. Um, maybe later on as we go through stages, we'd see that the ultimate sin there wasn't against God, but it was against the person that we actually harmed. Um, and so either way, we would hope that we would then say sorry to that person and, and, and um, maybe seek their forgiveness. Um, and that's something that Stage Blue starts to welcome in here, starts to engage with a little bit. Um, so the most important truth at this stage though, um, of all truth 
is rooted in this topic of sin and salvation. The most important truth is that Jesus died for our sins. Okay, so what did Jesus save us from? So the true answer at this stage, uh, but you will never hear it, uh, the true answer is that Jesus saves us from God. Okay, the actual answers you'll hear are, um, are sin or hell. So Jesus saves us from hell, Jesus saves us from sin. Um, but the, the true, when you dig down deep enough, the true answer is that Jesus is saving you from God. God is going to punish you. God is going to send you to hell. God is angry with your sin, um, with, with you as a, uh, because you've sinned. And, and so um, Jesus is saving you in that dynamic. But this is the most important truth of the, of the stage blue Christianity is that Jesus is your savior. He will save you from your sin, from hell. He is going to save you. If you do not understand this at stage blue, you're going to have a bad time. That's, that's it. It's the end of the story. If you are coming from an earlier or a later stage and you say, oh, I don't believe that Jesus saves us in that way, that's it. You're just not a Christian. There's not even an, a discussion. You know, it's not even, a, oh, well, what do you think? Or, you know, that's it. You are written off. There is no, uh, there's no hope of that being something that you are. A Christian is just off the table if you do not believe that Jesus came to die for your sins. Um, so his death satisfies God's wrath. Um, again, that can be um, slightly more evolved in believing in God's wrath against sin. But generally speaking, God's wrath against you, uh, the sinner. Jesus protects us from God. He stands in the gap against God's wrath and takes all of this punishment so that we don't have to. Uh, God the Father, uh, he takes on a wrathful and just side of God in the dynamic of salvation and sin. So God this Father who is loving in this dynamic, in this stage, is not very loving. He is wrathful. He is violent. He is aggressive. Um, and his wrath and violence and aggression is towards you and luckily absorbed by Jesus. So Jesus um, is the one that takes on the compassion, the love, the kindness, the grace, the mercy. It's Jesus uh, as, as the good guy, God as bad guy. And that is very much the dynamic at stage blue, but very rarely accepted or spoken about. Um, and Jesus's teachings are typically at this stage very secondary to Paul's teachings of salvation because Jesus didn't talk much about being saved um, and so the, the, the points he did say about salvation are elevated above other things that he said maybe like caring for the poor or whatever it might be um, whereas Paul who talks very often about being in Jesus and being saved those texts are often elevated and so you'll see often a bit of a, a pushback on stage blue is that they they value the texts of Paul more than they value the texts of Jesus. Now, again, there's no rights and wrongs. It's not what we're saying. We're not trying to pick good side, bad side. We're just observing what stage blue values and does. Excuse me. Um, so some interesting elements uh, at stage blue. I'll give you a couple of interesting facts uh, at this point about uh, salvation and sin. What's interesting is at the institutional level, so at the at the level um, of leadership, of pastors, of elders, um, studies have been done on um, who, how, what faiths may lead to salvation. And you'll find that stage blue churches, 100% across the board, say that the only way to find God and be saved is through Christianity. Okay, 100%. However, in those same churches, um, we found that when we polled the congregation, that percentage was quite substantially lower, okay? So um, we found that Catholics uh, said that it was 57% that Catholics said only through Christianity can people be saved. So actually almost half the people think that they might be able to find salvation through a different mean. Even though they're in this blue organization and institution led by people at blue, it seems that the people within the community are less blue. Okay, they're less rigid about that fact. And evangelical churches, that jumps right up to about 83%. So generally speaking, you're going to find that despite Catholic churches being much more blue, their congregants are less so. Um, whereas evangelical churches, which are very blue, you're going to look at maybe as much as 80%, according to this one statistic, of course, it's just one statistic, but according to this one statistic, as much as 80% are still very, very blue in this one regard. Um, and so you're going to see uh, as a prime example of in a blue church, not everyone is blue, right? But um, in a blue church, the majority are going to be blue. 
Um, and so prime example of just that. Um, and I think some stats uh, shift massively because um, you have a lot of movements and a lot of churches, maybe like mainline ones, um, they can be quite modern, maybe even postmodern, which is the next couple of stages, um, which of course Blue sees as backsliding, as, as moving away from the truth, as, as, uh, because Blue cannot conceptualize a later stage. Now, the later stages can't conceptualize a later stage, not until we get to stage 11, uh, 11, sorry, stage yellow do we see later stages. So right now, Blue just cannot have a, a paradigm for uh, it not being the end, it not being ultimately true and right. It just can't conceptualize that. And so it will see anything that is different. Anyone that has left blue and moved on has moved back. There is no forward. There is no forward from where we are. There is only a moving backwards. Now, what about heaven and hell at this stage? Well, heaven and hell at this stage are very literal. So uh, in polling uh, stage blue churches, 84% uh, of the churches uh, believed in a literal heaven, where 100% of the leaders uh, responded as believing in a literal heaven. Um, so generally speaking to this group, heaven is a place of bliss where you dwell with God for eternal, uh, eternity, for forever. Uh, and, and it's only for those who accept Jesus on earth, generally speaking. So again, 84, so if churches where they found that it was 100%, so any churches where the leaders said, yes, I believe in a literal heaven, they pulled the actual churches and those churches, 84% believed in a literal heaven. So they did the same thing. They looked at those churches that said, yes, I believe in a literal hell. Um, and they found that the congregation, 73% believed in a literal hell. So actually less people believed in hell than they did believe in heaven. But still a vast majority believed in the literal hell. And we would argue that most of the people that didn't probably came from a stage before or after, um, much more likely after. Um, so for those people though that do believe in literal hell, hell is a place of eternal torment for non-Christians. It's a place where you burn, that you are punished, that you suffer, that God uh, pours out his wrath on you day in, day out um, for the sins that you've done. Um, there are, however, many, uh, not many, a small portion of people at Stage Blue who believe in annihilationism, which uh, if you're not familiar with, you go watch my video on hell, um, but annihilationism in, in short is, um, is a cessation of existence. So it's uh, if you do not believe in Jesus, you cease to exist, you're, you're destroyed, you're wiped out, you're, you're ended. You might be punished for a short period and then cease to exist, or you might just cease to exist straight away. But heaven and hell, very literal, very similar to um, stage red, really, uh, in the grand scheme of things. I'm really sorry, this nose is like really itchy. I'm not sure what's going on, maybe an allergy, sorry. Um, we're, we're wrapping up, we're moving towards the end. So uh, well done for hanging in. Like I did say, it's gonna be a bit longer this one, uh, but we will get there. Kingdom of heaven. So kingdom of heaven, we start to see a slight difference between kingdom of heaven mentality and heaven itself. So the kingdom of heaven is the reign of God in Jesus uh, and ultimately in a future time, but it's, it can be here as well as later. And so there's a concept that allows for the kingdom of heaven to be brought on earth. Now, this uh, is largely overshadowed by the conversation about salvation and sin. So blue is not gonna be that focused on the kingdom of heaven. Churches that do focus on the kingdom of heaven will generally be well on their way to moving into orange, generally speaking. Um, however, um, there is a little bit of language of it. So kingdom of heaven though, what does it look like? It looks like um, peace and righteousness and justice, and it looks like union with Christ. So to bring the kingdom of heaven looks like getting people saved, obviously. It looks like getting people um, healed if, if that movement believes in it. So maybe a charismatic or Pentecostal church um, at this stage blue, would, that would be what it looks like to bring the kingdom is to, to heal people as well. Um, but it also looks like changing government. It looks like changing policies. It makes um, the world look more like what they think heaven looks like. So it does look like um, making sure abortions don't happen making sure um, marriage stays between a man and a woman. These are very blue concepts of what it is to bring the kingdom of heaven. Um, and so you're gonna see that being very, very common at stage blue. What about the mystical? The mystical is an interesting um, topic because at this stage, stage blue, blue likes the mystical, it likes mystics, but only in the past preferably even only in the Bible. We'll maybe accept some saints throughout history, but as few as possible, 
and really we only like miracles and mystical encounters to be in our Bible. We don't like it to be today. We don't like it um, because it's too uncertain. It's not, it's not something we can really wrap our heads around and make into a science. What you'll find is blues that do like the mystical, people that are in charismatic Pentecostal movements, will make it a science, will make it something that's fairly black and white. God will always want to heal and this is how he will do it. That's a, a very blue uh, mentality. Um, it's seen as a, generally speaking, uh, a mystical experience will be seen as a one-off ex uh, inc exception. So if someone does get healed in your church, oh, it's a one-off exception, praise God, that's really good of him, but we shouldn't expect it. That's not gonna happen often. Um, again, exceptions to that, charismatic and Pentecostal churches. Traditional churches, they're gonna focus um, on, uh, uh, on more rules, regulations, um, and outward transformation. So they're gonna focus more on how do we clean people up? If someone's a drug addict, how do we get them to stop taking drugs? There's not gonna be a focus on an inner transformation as much as the outer transformation. Stage blue is all about appearance. It's all about the rules and regulations. This is really what Jesus was challenging when he says, um, you know, you can not have an affair, but if you're lusting in your heart, it's basically the same thing. And so Jesus is saying, well, that's nice that we can make everything look good and we can get people's actions in order, but what about their heart? Um, and so uh, this is something that's quite a mystical uh, encounter to, to, to go deep, to go into the inner peace, the inner soul um, and do transformative work. Um, and, and seeing change in that is quite a mystical thing in a sense. And so this is, this is kind of left by stage blue often is less important as actually getting the, the, uh, the, the exterior nice and whitewashed and looking good. And I've seen this a lot as I traveled um, speaking and, and doing work with uh, a lot of churches, hundreds of churches. I've met with hundreds of pastors. And a lot of the times when you deal with the pastors, um, this would come up. They don't want something like grace that might bring people's sin to the surface because they don't want to deal with a deeper issue. They've dealt with the outer issue. So people are in, the, in their church don't appear to be sinning. That's great, they love that, they like that, that's nice. But they know if you gave them grace, they would immediately start sinning. So they know that the heart is still not in the right place. And this is a real blue issue. We, do, we don't know how to deal with the actual issues and we don't like to accept that the actual issues aren't getting changed by rules and regulations. But we know um, this is again and again being proven by scientific study, but it's also been said in the Bible throughout. Um, again, blue will struggle to see it, but the law only makes sin take a deeper root in our heart. Uh, and so rules and regulations don't really do much in the way of transforming people. Um, uh, the mystical can cause uh, individuals to seek approval of the group and to be racked with guilt often. Um, and so, I'm not really sure what I meant by that note, sorry. It causes individuals to seek approval of the group and to be racked with guilt often. Interesting. I'm not sure what I meant with that note. <laughs> Let me think about it and uh, I'll maybe jump back into it. Um, but people value, generally speaking, um, yeah, I guess because the mystical um, is this unique, rare experience, people that are mystics really struggle to fit into the blue environment. They really struggle to fit into their church. They really struggle to, to, to um, conform and to fit and therefore be validated. And so generally speaking, mystics are gonna struggle to fit into church. I know uh, growing up, my mom found this. She was a very mystical person. She was all about praying in the spirit and casting out demons and trying to heal people and praying in tongues. And, and the, our very blue churches really struggled to, to know what to do with her. Um, and so she, she was left not finding much approval and validation by the church. Now she would have said she didn't care, um, but probably on some level did. Um, and, and that can be a real issue for people that uh, seem to be more open to mystical encounter. Um, but it also means that often they can feel quite racked with guilt. They can doubt themselves a lot because the group is very different. The group doesn't see God that way. The group doesn't validate how they're seeing God and interacting. And so there's a real challenge there. Um, altered states are generally demonized at this stage. Okay, so we talked about altered states moving us forward and pushing us forward and how they happen to different people in history and in the Bible, you know, Peter has a, a vision or a dream and things like that. Paul has altered states. Um, 
and, and they can be really helpful for moving us forward. But we don't mind them being in the Bible, but we do not like altered states at stage blue. They're far too scary. They're demonized. Uh, we demonize them or we just write them off completely. Uh, you know, generally speaking, of course, the exception would be charismatics and Pentecostals who seek after altered states because that's part of their, their system. That's part of what gives them stability and certainty. So you'll see charismatics feeling, I get emails from charismatics going, does God really love me because I don't fall on the ground and shake or I don't feel what is happening or I haven't been healed. Um, and so there's, there's different manifestations of how this can work out and often they're direct polar opposites. So don't get too um, hung up on that. Um, just gonna quickly have a drink, sorry. Hope you guys are hanging in there. Um, we're just wrapping up now, really. We're gonna look at the pros and the cons, um, transformer, transformational dilemmas, and then we're gonna look at how to work with stage blue. Sorry, this has been a long one, but hopefully you can see this is really helpful stuff, okay? So pros. Well, there's a lot of pros to stage blue. So you might be listening to this if you're at a later stage and think, thank God I'm not stage blue. I hated that people. I, I used to be like when I was a kid or I was forced into that or, or I've never been that and I've never been so gullible and stupid. You might really hate stage blue. But the truth is there's a lot of good to stage blue. And even if you never grew up in a stage blue church, um, there's a very good chance that you have on some level been through stage blue internally in your personal development, okay? You've gone through that, that need for security and stability and, and certainty. That's, that's very much a, a key component of growing up as a child, okay? Now, what do we learn from stage blue? What, what do we want to include as we transcend? Well, we want to keep that level of faithfulness, to be faithful to, uh, to people, to our group, to God, to, uh, to what we believe to be true, um, that's a really uh, great trait and, and, and maybe uh, a little bit softer around the edges than red, right? Red was passionate to the degree where it would kill someone. Uh, maybe that's good that we've grown a little bit, we've transcended and included, we're still passionate and faithful, but we're less likely to bash someone over the head over it, right? That's, that's, that's transcending and including, right? That's evolving, that's growing and taking what's good but letting go of what's wrong. Um, it's very stable, state, uh, stage blue, and, and stability is really healthy, it's really helpful, it can be a really good thing. Um, and, and stability is really a core principle of stage blue. It has a lot of respect for authority and people who are in charge. Now, how it chooses people to be in charge and how it sees authority might be flawed, but actually uh, most stages will accept that there, there is some good to authority and, and maybe there's some wisdom and, and, and respecting people um, for knowing more or being more equipped or more skilled. Maybe it's good to look at that person and go, oh yeah, no, I really respect that and I'll learn from them, I'll listen to them, I'll allow them to make some decisions because they're better equipped to make that decision, right? It's really helpful, it's a really good thing to do. Um, there's a lot of loyalty at this stage and that's really, really good. That, that comes from that, that purple stage really. It's, 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 growing and evolving and we want to keep growing and evolving that loyalty and, and that ability to be loyal to our friends to our family um, to people that, that have uh, grown to be trustworthy we want to be loyal to someone like that um, their, their faith really anchors them in trials so something that can be said of blue that is really quite beautiful is how um, how just solid they can be in really awful times, really terrible times, deaths and sickness and things like that. They have a faith that keeps them going through that. And that's a, a really good and, and, and healthy thing uh, in a lot of ways. Now, later stages will look down on that and go, oh, it's just a crutch or something like that. But the truth is there's a lot of good to that. Uh, and, and as we grow and develop, we'll start to see that actually that's a really helpful thing and it's a, not the worst thing in the world to have. Um, most people got where they are today at later stages by going through uh, some form of, of traditional church, of, of a blue church, you know. So most Christians that are later on have been through this. Now, often uh, there's a lot of pain and suffering that's come from that. And of course, we, we don't, we're not particularly uh, uh, glorifying that, but we might be even thankful for that, that it's made us who we are. Um, but generally speaking, a lot of what we have that's good has come from that uh, that stuff that we, we developed at Stage Blue. There was a lot of good that, that was developed in us and, 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 and uh, took root in us as we, as we grew. So it's really important that we see that, that this is a, a healthy stage uh, for those that need to be here. Like I said, people that are non-Christian, uh, tribal and warrior or traditional will probably only get saved into a traditional church. 
So we really need the traditional church if we want people to, to start connecting with, with God, with Jesus, with the divine. Like that's a really helpful path for them to start maturing, start growing, start developing and start moving towards what we might see as more healthy if we are um, uh, further along in our development. So we might want, if we're an orange, we might want someone at stage blue to be orange. But actually, can we be... Um, wise enough to look at someone at stage purple and realize, well, maybe they're gonna to have to become red and then blue before they can become orange, okay? Um, really important that we start to see that. They're very kind, uh, they're community focused, they're family focused. These are really lovely and wonderful and healthy things. So let's, um, let's make sure we include those and we value those at stage blue. Um, they're, they're, stage blue is really hard working. Right, a really hard working because they, they sacrifice themselves for the for the other, um, and, and that's a beautiful thing to do. They they value the ethics of working hard, of um, of serving, um, of of being very sacrificial. These are beautiful traits that are really helpful and healthy. When uh, we continue to grow and develop, we'll transcend, but we will hopefully include some of that because it's going to be key to later stages to have some of those components. And um, and th there is an increased safety at stage blue. Right, so uh, it's easy to demonize stage blue, but if we look at the stage before, people were running around and clubbing each other on the head to take control, and it was chaos. Um, and so actually there's a lot of great stuff that has come from civilization. We need to recognize that it's at stage blue that most of our, um, our stability as society today has come through that, right? Our ability to function as large civilizations, our ability to grow food, our ability to do a lot of things came through stage blue. Now stage orange and, 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 and on has brought even more amazing innovation and growth, but we wouldn't have got there if it wasn't for stage blue. So let's not demonize blue too much. Now I'm gonna go over a few uh, negative elements of stage blue. There's probably gonna be quite a few, okay? Uh, just like there was more pros than usual in our videos, there's gonna be more negatives because as we're going on, I'm gonna go into more and more depth at each stage, okay? Um, so you can expect orange and green to be sort of similar lengths as this long uh, blue video um, and yellow will be the longest of all. It's going to be very, very in depth. Um, okay, so the negative elements, the cons of stage blue. Well, stability. Stability is the greatest strength of blue and it is the greatest weakness because the thing is stability creates such a, a, a glorification on the status quo, on everything staying the same, on things not changing, that it strongly can hinder spiritual growth and so for a lot of people it will make it really hard for them to grow into stage orange they're going to really resist stage orange stage blue is going to look at later stages and demonize them like crazy like i said they're going to really see these later stages as backsliding as evil um, you know if you want things to stay the same to be rigid you're going to um, overly uh, assume people that want things to change and to evolve and, and be more inclusive you're going to just go oh they're just liberals or you know whatever they're going to throw out all sorts of labels and all sorts to demonize these later stages um, the, the, the need to fit in at stage blue, it, it can stop new ideas and systems from being established or, or even talked about. So, so growth as a society can be really hindered at stage blue. And we see this actually, it's, it's at stage orange that society explodes in its growth and, and its innovation. Um, but stage blue from 5,000 years ago to just a few hundred years ago, there was actually not that much change in a lot of areas. Um, and, and things that did change were incremental. And so um, there, there, there was so minute at times that, that, that you know it was allowed because it was small, minute changes along the way. And even they were fought fiercely the whole time. Um, so stage blue can be really intolerant and have a lot of prejudice. Um, inequality really thrives at this stage, at stage blue traditional. Um, it, 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 it took the world to become more modern. So the Western world had to become more modern for the church to stop holding on to things like slavery. And the truth is it's not become itself modern enough to let go of things like homophobia, uh, patriarchy, uh, patriarchy um, things like nationalism are still rife in the church. Um, and so it's going to take more and more um, modern uh, development for the church to start losing its grip on some of those things. It still holds deeply onto those things. Um, it can't really, um, it, it, because it can't ask questions of itself and it doesn't allow others to ask questions, it, again, it stunts its growth. It, it won't, it, it struggles in an evolving complex world because, um, 
it is very simple. It requires a simple uh, faith, a simple outlook, a simple worldview. And, and as the world gets more and more connected, Stage Blue really struggles because it itself is a little bit of an echo chamber. Um, it doesn't, uh, it, it, Stage Blue can be radical, it can be fundamental. Um, terrorism exists in Stage Blue, early Stage Blue, late Stage Red. Um, so there's a lot of like, uh, these, these elements are still quite negative. Um, Stage Blue can justify a lot of evil um, by labeling it the devil and fighting it. Um, it still falls into a lot of those red traps. Um, Stage Blue can be deeply unloving um, if you differ. So think of a conservative Christian parent whose child tells them that they're gay. Um, many, many parents, that is it. They will draw a line in the sand. They'll even kick their children out. I, I've, I've talked to hundreds of children at this point, children, but under 18, who have been kicked out of their home because they're gay. Hundreds, not exaggeration. Um, and, and so that's the problem with Stage Blue. They, they, they fail to see what is loving um, and see loving as pushing people away, as, as, as drawing lines in the sand, as rejecting people. That's a loving act if um, it contrasts what they believe is right and wrong, what is black and white. Um, and so Stage Blue is really locked into that and it can really cause a lot of harm and, and, and hurt. Um, it, it doesn't really allow for true spirituality. Um, so I say spirituality uh, in the sense of allowing for faith, for doubt, um, for evolving of beliefs, of seeing God as bigger and bigger every day. That, that, that isn't really something that is um, possible at Stage Blue. It's, it's just, it's hindered because Stage Blue needs everything to stay the same. Um, stage Blue can't have doubts. It must have certainty at all times. Um, it demonizes other people far too easy. It assides uh, blame very easily. Um, stage Blue can fall into the trap of being quite self-righteous at times. Um, and so that can be really dangerous. Uh, it will um, use scripture without question to validate its own ego and its, and its own uh, violence. Um, it's very quick to censor things. So Stage Blue, um, it, it lives in a world that values freedom, but it itself um, only values its own freedoms and it will try and censor everyone else's freedoms. Um, it can be very anti-globalism because that's a real threat to their bubble, to the way they see things. Um, it can be at times very homophobic, uh, racist, uh, misogynistic, we mentioned some of those, um, because it doesn't, um, it sees different groups as dangerous. So sometimes race isn't an issue for someone at Stage Blue, but it can be if that race is different enough or seen differently enough, a line will be drawn in the sand and it will be on the other side. Um, and so this can be a real problem for people at Stage Blue. Stage Blue can often struggle with compassion. So it sees things like, um, so for example, sex or drugs or alcohol is sinful. Um, but they fail to see that sometimes a sex addiction or a drug addiction or an alcohol addiction can be a very real uh, mental illness or even a physical illness at times. And it fails to see that and have compassion for that. Um, and so support groups aren't a massive priority at Stage Blue. Um, and if they are, those groups are very much about stopping the thing. Um, they're not about getting to the heart of the issue, about healing the root cause. It's not about um, dealing with people's mental or physical illnesses. It's about dealing with the thing they're doing that makes them not part of the group or makes them wrong. Um, excuse me. Stage Blue can be quite mean parents at times. So children need to be perfect. So that the saying like children should be silent, not heard, uh, things like that. It's a very Stage Blue parenting. Uh, stage blue uh, perspective on what a child is. So children don't get to, to live as a child. Um, they, they must basically be small adults um, from as early as they can. Um, they struggle to see similarities in culture and religion. So a stage blue Christian will really struggle to see that stage blue Islam is very similar. So they both dislike a lot of the same things. They both value the same things. They both uh, believe very similar things about God and about their scriptures and things like that. They, they, they can't see any similarities because that uh, that's scary. That makes things a bit murky and, and we need to focus on the differences and, and ignore any similarities. And of course, that doesn't help for connection and for um, and for growth. And a great example of that is maybe not in the, um, the Christianity Islam, but just in one denomination or another, right? So the Southern Baptist Church uh, 
uh, the, the first Baptist church of whatever versus the second Baptist church, right? And even they're basically the same church, but they just can't see eye to eye because they only see the differences. They only see the things that are different and they clash and clash and clash. Um, so Stage Blue can be really bureaucratic. Um, I mentioned right at the beginning, Stage Blue, um, it wants uh, theocracy, it wants um, authoritarianism. So it might, it might permit democracy and it might even be a part of democracy, it might even celebrate democracy, but what it really wants is a theocracy. What it really wants is a God-appointed leader. And actually, if it can get a God-appointed leader, it's more than happy. It doesn't really care if it's democracy or not. Uh, it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't really care about that because what the group wants, what the, uh, as in the group beyond my group, what they want is irrelevant. What my group wants is really important because we're God's people, we're right, and we need our guy in charge, our guy making the rules because they're the right rules. Um, at the very worst extreme of stage blue, you can see things like genocide and ethnic cleansing. So um, Hitler could have been uh, argued to be red, but actually was very blue. Um, so he was a very strong cross of blue and red and a lot of what happens at the concentration camps, a lot of what happened even in Britain with our invention of the concentration camps in South, America, uh, South uh, Africa and, and things like that, um, very blue activity with some red elements to it. So what did blue need to do to change? What, what does blue, what's the transformational dilemma for blue? What, what is going to cause them to, to, to go, I'm hitting my ceiling, I, I need to change? Because that's what we all need to do, we need to hit that ceiling and eventually go, this isn't working for me. So I've got everything that I like, everything that's good, I'm gonna take with me, but there's things that are just causing me to hit a ceiling and I need to move on, I need to, I need to move past this. Well, basically, big transformational dilemmas for stage blue are just what's naturally happening in the world. The world is getting more and more orange and even green, and as I said, maybe a percent will be uh, yellow. Um, so not much of yellow, but a lot of orange and, and a little bit of green will make blue struggle to function. They're gonna struggle to function in their black and white world as the world becomes more gray. So as they function in the global world, they're gonna realize that their views and their culture isn't the only way of doing things. There is gonna come a point where they're just gonna start hitting uh, hitting that ceiling and realizing this isn't working for me and actually that over there is working for them so I need to accept that this might be a bit more gray than I thought I, this might be a little less black and white so they need to recognize that my black and white doesn't necessarily work for everyone and someone else's thing that I think is very gray might actually work for me uh, potentially uh, the ego gets hungry for individual success this is the biggest thing that will cause uh, blue to grow largely is individual success and individual autonomy, individual personal relationship with God, individual uh, building a business or helping myself or growing myself or working on myself. That desire, which was in red and suppressed in blue because we valued society and we were willing to let go of that so that we could have more stability and certainty, that's going to come back to the surface and you're going to go, yeah, this is nice. The stable society is wonderful, but really we're still all individuals and we still all want something for ourselves. And that's going to start to come to the surface and become a bit uncomfortable and it's going to push us into orange. Um, so uh, people ultimately long for freedom. Ultimately, the deep down long in our heart is for freedom and, and our, our hierarchy, our rules, our caste systems, um, they only work for those that are on the top. They only work for those that are truly free. And so there is gonna be more and more people who are oppressed, who are gonna stand up, who are gonna rise up and go, this isn't okay. And that's gonna cause them to hit ceilings sooner. It's gonna cause them to want to shift into orange and try and create a bit more freedom. Um, it's also gonna cause those who are doing the oppression to think, uh, generally speaking, only after they get overthrown, generally. Um, it, it requires some change of circumstances. Generally, when we're quite comfortable and happy, we tend not to evaluate what's made us comfortable and happy. But on the whole, um, those that are at the bottom are gonna really be pushing against that and hitting ceilings, and they're gonna be challenged to change. Um, You're gonna to want to, if you're at blue, and, and there might be very few people at blue, generally speaking, people at blue are gonna to struggle to with this whole series. They're not gonna like it, especially the next stages. Um, but if you are at blue, or you recognize there's parts of you that are at blue, I encourage you, study this stage extensively. Really dive into what it is to be blue, um, because you're gonna to have to understand yourself, 
understand what's good in this stage that you want to take with you and also really work out the limitations. You're only going to know the limitations when you hit the, the fullness of blue. Um, and so you really need to work out blue in yourself. And so um, do that, please work out the blue. But also if you're at blue, study orange, study the next stage a lot because um, it's going to help you know where you're going. Um, and, and also it's going gonna, it's gonna to point out things that you're resisting that you need to move into. Um, so you need to stop judging others with labels. It's going to hold you back. So casting that line in the sand, drawing that line in the sand and, and, and saying they're out, I'm in. They're sinners, I'm not. They're materialists, I'm not. They are deconstructionists, I'm not. They're hippies, I'm not. They're liberals, I'm not. That is going to hold you back. That's going to cause you to resist changing, developing and growing. You don't need to let go of who you are. You are going to go through this and still be you, but you're going to have to figure out what you take with you and what you let go of. And, and one of the things you're definitely gonna have to let go of is your judgmentalism, um, your, your black and whiteness, um, and, and, and you're gonna have to start embracing people at the next level. That's gonna be really, really, really hard for you. Like words can't describe hard for you, but you will get there. This is going to happen uh, unless you die blue, which is possible. But if you're gonna grow, this is where you're growing to. You are going to grow into orange. And so study orange and, and try and be less um, resistant to it, less judgmental of it. Recognize that all traditions ultimately evolve. The Christianity you have today is not the Christianity they had in the first century. It just isn't, it's evolved, it's grown. Um, so you have to be willing to let go of your tradition at some point. Uh, if you're going to stay in the tradition, you have to let go of what the tradition needs to be because it's going to grow with or without you to some degree. Um, start to question authority and realize that you need to be your own authority. So again, establishing some ego in you is going to help you grow and develop. Um, travel. Travel is huge. Notice that other civilizations, other cultures are different. Notice how relative some truths are based on where you are, what culture you're in, what faith you have recognize that traveling is a huge part of that. People at Blue struggle to travel and tend not to have traveled. As soon as you start traveling more, you tend to start to move towards orange because it, it, it just gives you a more global view. It gives you a greater understanding of how the world works. Um, try and, and recognize how hierarchy hurts and victimizes other people. Try and see that dynamic. So we talked earlier about maybe someone at stage blue is always gonna protect uh, the culture, the society, the rules, the structure. If you're at that stage, um, you might protect uh, a police. You might side with a police that has clearly hurt someone else. Um, and you're gonna side with them because well, they're police, they're the law, they're, they're what's right. They're, they know what's right and wrong and they protect that. Try and see well, what happened there. How did that hurt someone? Was that right? Was that fair? Well, is it possible that sometimes the police are not correct, that they are wrong, that this isn't as black and white as it could be? Um, try and look at these kind of things. Try and look at things that are unjust, um, that are not fair. Look at hierarchies and caste systems and, and notice maybe that you yourself find yourself maybe higher up on those caste systems. Maybe not at the top, but maybe higher up than a lot of other people. Study those other people. See how the, the system affects other people and is that okay with you? Because uh, again, deep down, people don't want others to suffer. And that's not something that we, we inherently want. Um, we might want that at, at a, a survival level when their suffering will mean that I'm okay. But generally speaking, that's not something that humans will want. Um, go to university. That's a really key uh, thing. If people haven't uh, gone to higher education, this can be a real key to, to moving into orange because university it isn't actually, a lot of people think university is about learning everything you can about computer science or learning everything you can to be being a doctor. But one of the core elements of, of university, of, of college, is it's teaching you how to learn. It's teaching you how to be um, slightly more objective where generally you can't be, of course, subjectivity is everything, but it's at least teaching you that everything is subjective a little bit. It's, it's teaching you how to um, weigh up different arguments and see and, and, and measure is something true, is something not, how to fact check. Those are important things in moving forward, in, in moving into orange, um, is gonna be able to learn to see things more multidimensionally, learn to uh, look at truth with a bit more nuance and a little bit more um, skepticism and doubt. Um, 
So studying things like science and, 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 and maybe doing further education can be really helpful for people that, that need to grow. Um, study the extremes of blue. Study things like the, the Crusades and go, is that really the way that we want to operate? Is that really the way we think? Because that is the extreme of stage blue. Um, and so maybe have a think about that. Um, develop a desire for personal success. So think about what do you want? What do you want? Not just what's good for my group. And, and, and of course, I'm not trying to say just be selfish, but this is an important aspect of your life is what do I want out of life and how, how am I getting that? How, how, is it, uh, how am I going to go after what I need in life to succeed? Um, that's a real key drive that will move you and shift you into orange. Um, you know, blue is especially stubborn at evolving. It's really, really stubborn because it's so rigid, because it's so black and white, it really struggles with moving into the later stages. Um, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to be okay with that. And that is what it is. It has to work itself out. You have to let your blueness be blue. And once it gets to its ceiling, it will start to evolve into orange. You're already probably partially orange in a few areas anyway. That's okay. It's all okay. Um, so, uh, Something you can do as well that's really helpful at this stage is contemplation and reflection. Um, just sitting in silence and just thinking, just mulling over things. Think about these kind of conversations. Think about what are the limitations of the way I do life? When I believe things are so rigid, how does that affect other people? Can I contemplate what it would be like if I was born in Iraq um, 30 years ago and my parents were killed in the war? Um, what would my life have been like? How would I have seen the world? How would I have seen the divine? Uh, what picture would I have when there was only mosques and no churches? Like, how, how would I have been and what would that have looked like? And is that fair that I would have gone to hell? Or is that fair that I wouldn't have been saved and but someone else over in America that voted for the guy that bombed my family, they would go to heaven. How does that work? And just sitting and mulling these things over. Um, this kind of uh, exploration work can be really helpful in, in starting to let go of the rigidity of what we believe. It's, it's okay to believe some of these things, but uh, being so rigid about it is gonna stop you from growing. Okay, what? how do we work with Bloom? We'll finish here. Well done, you're doing really well. Um, I think I'm struggling uh, to keep going. Um, you've probably paused this and stopped about three times anyway, but <laughs> I've got it one go. Um, Working with blue, when we're working with people at stage blue, there's a lot of complexity to it. Um, very few, this is really important to remember, very few rationally became blue. So few people will rationally be argued out of blue, okay? So rational arguments, logical discussions are generally not going to be that productive unless you're very clear on the nuances of what blue believes and how you might present new ideas so that they're not too challenging. They do. The key is not to make blue people feel unsafe uncertain and unstable. Those, those key things, certainty, stability, um, safety, that is key to blue. When you challenge that, they're, they're, they get scared. They take a step back and they try and protect themselves. They dig deep in. You're actually gonna cause some people to regress if you push them too hard. And so be careful when you're approaching some of these topics um, to be very careful with how you present things. Um, Typically, the main thing that's gonna cause people at stage blue to grow, and, and this is really unfortunate, but it's true in all these stages, the main ways people will grow is through great love or great suffering. So Richard Rohr says that often, doesn't he? But it's through um, something that pushes them to a breaking point where they become ready to explore things in a new way, to explore things more rationally, to let go of their rigidity, to be open to some spiritual truth, to find an answer that wasn't, uh, an answer to a question that didn't exist uh, before. Um, things like great suffering uh, and great love, generally great suffering will cause this. You'll find a lot of people that have moved into stage orange that were heavily entrenched in blue have undergone the death of a loved one, a serious illness, um, a divorce is very common, things like that are very, very common uh, as, as things that push people into orange. Now that's not me wishing that on anyone, trust me, I've been through uh, all of those things. Um, wouldn't wish them on my worst enemy, but the process and the growth that it's brought me, I wish to you all. I really do wish that you would go through that growth and I do wish that you would go through it without having to suffer. Um, and, I, and that should be our hope as we deal with people at Stage Blue is hope that they don't have to go through any of that suffering, um, but great love 
can bring people through that too as well. So offer great love to people at Stage Blue. Love them in a way that doesn't make sense to them, right? At Stage Blue, it's hard for them to love people that are different. It's very hard for them to love their enemy. Um, and if loving their enemy will certainly look a certain way, they'll, they'll call it love, but loving their enemy can be very unloving to someone at Stage Blue. Showing a love that is truly love to someone at Stage Blue rocks their world. They don't know what to do with it. They will reject it and hate it, but they'll go away thinking about it. Um, and so do offer that. Offer them the great love that can cause transformation. And at times be aware that great suffering causes transformation. Be, excuse me, be there for someone. If they're a friend that's at Stage Blue and they go through a divorce or someone dies that they love, be there, love them. Offer them great love in their great suffering. Um, and you'll be amazed at how open and ready they are to grow in their own time. It's not going in and going, oh great, someone's going through a divorce, I'll go and preach to them. I'm not saying that at all, please don't do that. My God, please do not do that. Um, but you understand what I'm saying, right? You can, you can see the, the dynamic there that, that's going on. Um, most people born, uh, most people in this culture in the West were probably, um, if you're, if you're 30 or above, maybe 25 or above, you were probably born into stage blue to some degree or another. Um, even people born today are likely to be stage blue to some degree or another, but certainly more orange at this point. Um, and so generally speaking, people that were born into stage blue could well die at stage blue. That's the, the, that's the possibility of growth for some people. It is such a rigid fixed system that if they've not been exposed to enough difference, to enough orange and, and green, and maybe a, a, enough yellow people that are able to interact with these uh, people on their own level and understand what they need to grow, it's very likely people will, will be born and die blue. You can probably think of maybe people like your grandparents, you know, uh, maybe their their parents probably were born blue and died blue because that there's there's been a huge period of time where blue has been all there is right blue is largely maybe there's a little bit of red and they looked down and went oh gosh these philistines are red but they themselves just didn't evolve didn't grow and that's okay because the growth was incremental the growing through blue can take hundreds of years and and we're building and building upon. Uh, upon our own uh, nature and self. And that happens in our individual as well as our society. Societies move a lot slower than individuals um, because societies require a mass of individuals to change. Um, so try not to get too bogged down. At the end of the day, the, the stage people are at is the stage people need to be at. God meets people where they are. People grow uh, and, and can love and can be loved at any stage. Um, and so try not to get too bogged down if you find someone at stage blue and they're just not changing. That's okay, it really is. You need to find a place to be okay with it. And that's gonna be really hard. Uh, it's maybe not as hard as leaving someone at stage red because red is so militant and violent and angry. Um, but it, it is hard all the same. You have to try and be yellow in this. I say this each, po each video so far when I've talked about working with other stages, I've said that you have to be a bit yellow. You have to look at people who are in a different place and, um, and be able to understand their stage, understand the next stage you need to go and be willing to slowly try and make incremental changes rather than just rip them out of blue and try and move them to where you are. Um, be aware um, that if you are educated in the West, if you are a Western European or, uh, or American and you have further education, you are going to underestimate how much of the world is blue. You're really going to underestimate how much of the world is blue. You're probably gonna underestimate how much of your country is blue, okay? And we see this again and again in, in America. Um, uh, many people underestimate how blue their own country is. It's, it's very blue still America. Um, and so be aware of that. A lot of people that you presume are gonna be like you and maybe more orange are really going to be blue, a lot of them, or a lot of their psyche is going to be blue, just as maybe part of you will be blue. And um, other stages are going to trigger blue like crazy, okay? So orange and green, maybe the earlier stages as well, early stages are gonna scare blue because they're so violent, so pagan, so wild, they're like, you know, multiple gods or they're overly spiritualizing everything or they're violent. Um, but the later stages are gonna terrify blue even more because they represent um, something much more scary. They represent uncertainty, uh, letting go of the truth, all sorts of things as science. And, 
um, and these facts that disagree with my God and my Bible, terrifying to Blue. So Blue is constantly terrified of change. And so when you're working with Blue, you need to be aware that they're scared. They are really, really scared. Recognize that there's um, triggers that are going to trigger Blue, okay? So Blue will pick on later stages uh, and joke about these later stages um, and go, oh, they're, they're so easily triggered about everything. But the truth is Blue is very easily to trigger as well. And so be aware of that and try not to trigger Blue, okay? So try and avoid things um, as you interact with Blue like um, uncertainty, relativism, uh, skepticism, atheism, uh, intellectuals will trigger blue, um, uh, academic elites, we talked about that, intellectual elites, very triggering to blue. Um, postmodernism is terrifying to blue. They are going to freak out about postmodernism because what are you saying? Truth is relative. Ah, you've, you know, they are not going to like that. Um, the concept of sin not being punished, very scary to a blue Christian. They're, they're really going to struggle with that. And so you need to be aware of that as you're talking with them. How are you going to frame things so that that's not gonna be the deal breaker that causes them to take a step back and retreat, that, but instead you're gonna keep drawing them forward. You're gonna bring them with you bit by bit. Um, chaos is scary to blue, obviously. It's the very opposite of stability and certainty. Uh, sexual freedom, very, very dangerous to blue. They're very about uh, purity and, and things like that. Um, any upset to their hierarchy is very, very scary. So don't mess with our hierarchies. You know, it's like um, suggesting to the Catholic Church about having female priests, that is terrifying to them. They don't wanna, don't mess with that. Uh, traitors are very, very triggering to blue. They do not like the idea of someone that's turned on them. And you'll see that with um, people like um, Edward Snowden or a whistleblower or something like that. Very triggering to blue. That's that. How could you turn on our perfect sight? Again, the concept of, well, yes, maybe that person's done something wrong, but we can't see that wrong because they're in charge. They've their authority. You've turned on your your country, on your on your God appointed leader, on your whatever. You know that. So it's a it's a real disconnect. Someone like a whistleblower because. Uh, they might be highlighting something that's wrong, but Stage Blue will still side with the person that was doing the wrong because they are the authority. They're God chosen. They're they're the thing that holds our society together. Um, questioning their orth orthodoxy, don't question a Blue's doctrine and things like that. Be very careful when you do how you go about it, how you do it. If you can at all, you're, you're asking questions that will help them uh, start stepping into it. We talked about um, the example of. Uh, penal substitution. So even if you don't believe in Christus Victor, maybe that's just a step closer. So maybe we can just help them take a few steps. Maybe we can introduce some truths that will move them forward. So maybe uh, you uh, you think that uh, God would never send someone to hell to punish them, but that's a key element for this blue person. So how do we go about maybe just moving them towards something like annihilationism? Could they entertain the idea that God wouldn't punish someone for eternity, they would just cease to exist? Is that a step? And it's just an example. Obviously, that's not going to work for a lot of people. But it's it's how do we understand steps and and, and taking baby steps and 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 the process? We need to value the process rather than just valuing where we are when we're working with blue, because where we are is not going to work for a lot of blue people. Um, eh, where are we? Sorry. Uh, be, these are all s still trigger points. Women having positions of authority, women in the workplace, women in, in leadership of church, very triggering. Gender roles as a whole can be very triggering. Sexuality, very triggering because these are all messing with our norms, messing with our culture, messing with our black and white. Um, swearing and cursing, don't, don't do that around blue people. They'll get very upset. Um, even when used in context, it is still, it's not appropriate. We don't do that. Um, science, whenever it changes something that is the status quo, whenever it challenges. So it might be that, oh, the earth is round, not flat. That's no-no in stage blue. Or, oh, we think the earth is this old, but then stage blue thought the earth was this old. You, you can't do that. Whereas other people at stage blue, that might not be a trigger for them. You know, someone that's not a Christian, but stage blue probably has no problem with you saying, oh, the earth you know, is 13, you know, what, 0.7 billion years or whatever. That's fine. They'd be like, okay, cool. No problem. But you say that to a Christian that has an idea that the Bible says it's 10,000 years old, that's game over. You're going to shut them down. They're not going to talk with you. They're going to label you. They're going to discredit you. They're going to say you're uh, a liberal. You're progressive. You're just, you know, taking the Bible not seriously. You've let go of God. You've backslidden. All sorts of things that are just going to shut down any opportunity to interact and, and connect with them in a meaningful way. Um, blue is going to be very fearful of moving forward. It's going to be really, really hard. And you've got to have some compassion. 
Like, try and remember if you were at this stage, how scared you were of being wrong, of, of God punishing you, of, um, of, of not being part of the group. Um, it's a really, really scary thing. If you've moved beyond this, you've maybe experienced some levels of being rejected by your friends, by your family, by your church, by your community. That's what these people are facing. It's really scary. And you might have come to terms with that. Maybe you haven't, but it's going to be really hard for them to do that. And you, you have to have grace. You've got to have compassion and mercy in that process because this is not easy for them to start questioning some of these things. Um, yeah. Uh, on the whole, blues religion is about a belief and not an experience. Um, experiences can be really helpful. So we talked about altered states. That can be a real huge element of pushing people forward. Um, it can be massive but it also can be really terrifying and it might even cause people to go further in depending on how um, extreme the belief is. So generally speaking, I'd say leave altered states to God to do. Uh, don't try and uh, manipulate and create experiences that are they're not, they're not ready for. Um, but generally speaking, that can be very helpful uh, for, for Blue to move forward. Um, generally speaking for Blue, an experience is there to validate their current experience, their current belief and ideology. Um, and so in a sense, you're, you're walking on thin ice when you're trying to create experiences to try and pull blue forwards because you may well give them an experience that roots them further in their ideology because we're all, we all see our experiences and perceive the world through our own lenses. So you might give them a profound encounter where God tells them to love everyone and they see it through their lens of only loving themselves, their, their group, or it might see love everyone, but I love everyone by telling them that God hates them unless they change, you know, it's, it's hard to say how people will react to experiences because we tend to want to validate our current thoughts and beliefs and ideologies by our experiences. They have to be quite profound and quite shaking uh, to, to really push people forward. Um, so yeah, blue is ultimately the most stubborn of all the stages as far as growth goes. It's, it's really hard for blue to grow. If you are blue and you've watched this, I tell you, well done so much. Honestly, I'm so, I can't describe how proud I am of someone uh, being in that mindset uh, predominantly and being able to watch something like this open-mindedly and, and challenging. Honestly, you're, you're a lot less blue than maybe you think potentially. Um, but that's really amazing it really is and and if you are watching this and you've got blue friends and family and loved ones and you go to a church full of people that are mostly blue have grace have grace for them honestly it's 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 a really really hard stage to grow through and it's and it really can be something that you root in that you just become very rigid in um and so be there for them love them extravagantly like i said but recognize that change is going to take time and sometimes it's going to take a few generations you know trying to change a blue church might take multiple generations that's what you're looking at it's just the, is the way it is um, and you have to on some level become okay with that maybe that's part of your growth uh, learning that you can't change everything you can't make everyone like you um, all right we'll wrap up there well done for hanging in and i'll see you for stage orange next <laughs>